。名字，我博宇。谢谢。Knowing this information, Chilian immediately contacted Old to find out who Boyu really was. And this time, Chilian found out that Boyu was Xiao's boyfriend during college. Hu Boyu 呢是江小元大学时候的男朋友 At that moment, Xiao was walking alone when suddenly a mysterious man started following her. But Xiao didn't notice him. Luckily, Chilian arrived just in time and gave the man a lesson. But the man managed to escape from Chilian. Shortly after, Xiao contacted Chilian because she saw him there. But Chilian lied, saying he was still in Chongqing. After Xiao returned to the dormitory, Chilian informed her that their investigation at Mr. Zhang's company was temporarily suspended due to a lack of further information. Xiao immediately contacted Chilian and reminded him to be careful. However, Xiao felt that Chilian was hiding something from her. And even his behavior seemed to change slightly. But Chilian still asked Shang to look after Xiao because he was very concerned about her safety. Hello, guys! Welcome to Drama Cine Recap. For those of you who are new to this channel, please subscribe first. Here, you'll get the best summaries of Chinese dramas. And today, we're continuing our marathon adventure. But before we dive in, for your comfort, grab some snacks, let go of your worries, relax your mind, fasten your seatbelt, and of course, get comfy. Without further ado, here's the full episode rundown of the movie *Derailment* in drama cine recap version. *Derailment*, a Chinese drama, tells the love story of Jiang Xiaoyuan, played by Liu Haokun, and Qi Lian, played by Lin Yi. Xiao is a beautiful, wealthy girl, while Qi Lian is a mysterious, handsome man. Their romance begins when Xiao suddenly travels through space and time, where she meets Chilian, who seems to share a similar fate. Together, they work to find answers to their shared predicament. What will happen next in their love story? Will they succeed in finding answers and revealing their true identities? The movie starts in 2012, showing us a handsome guy named Chilian. Taking his friend Jing Yang to the hospital so Jing Yang can get treatment. Kilian seems really worried about Jing Yang because he's a good friend. Jing Yang's condition is due to helping Chilian out of a fight, but after a checkup, the doctor says Jing Yang's condition is quite serious. Chilian feels guilty because Jing Yang was supposed to join the provincial team this year. A few days later, Jing Yang's condition starts improving, and Chilian receives a call from his father. Asking him to go abroad, when Chilian returns to Jingyang, he finds Jingyang's wheelchair empty except for a phone. Chilian continues to search for Jingyang, who disappeared suddenly. Then we're taken to 2025, where the lighthouse system will be active in three days. We meet a beautiful girl named Xiao, who's at a club. Xiao doesn't seem too concerned about her job, despite Mr. Su. Her father's personal assistant reminding her, Xiao is with some friends, including her boyfriend Bo Yu, who seems innocent compared to Xiao's male friends. When Bo Yu goes to the restroom, a sexy woman approaches him, claiming to know him well. Xiao catches them, and though Xiao's male friends suggest Bo Yu might not be as innocent as she thinks, Xiao trusts him enough to help him and warn the seductive woman. During their journey home, Bo Yu tries to lighten the mood. And Xiao asks if Bo Yu really likes her. Bo Yu assures Xiao he does, and Xiao easily believes him. The next day, Xiao visits her good friend Rui's bakery. Despite Mr. Su calling repeatedly, Xiao prioritizes Rui. Xiao helps Rui's bakery both as an investor and mentor. Later, Xiao's company holds an event featuring cakes made by Rui. Two women criticize the cakes, which deeply saddens Rui. Xiao comforts Rui and gives her a scarf, showing Xiao sees Rui as more than a friend and always helps her when needed. Xiao asks Bo Yu to take Rui back to the bakery because Xiao needs to attend to other work. Later, before leaving, Xiao notices Rui leaving behind the scarf she gave her. Xiao rushes to the bakery to return the scarf. However, to her surprise, upon arriving there, Xiao overhears Bo Yu and Rui being intimate, which shocks and disappoints her. 
我们什么时候才能结束这种偷偷摸摸的？不拿那笔投资款，我直接就跟他坦白。Shortly after, Rui notices Xiao's presence, making her nervous, but she tries to calm herself. Rui lies about Bo Yu's presence until Xiao confronts her and Bo Yu about their betrayal. Xiao becomes extremely angry at Rui, who becomes afraid of Xiao's wrath. Rui begs Xiao not to withdraw her investment, but Xiao, feeling betrayed by someone she trusted, remains firm. Rui even goes as far as threatening to commit suicide if Xiao leaves her, but Xiao disregards the threat completely and hurriedly leaves Rui on the bridge. Afterward, Xiao returns home exhausted. However, Bo Yu keeps calling her incessantly. When Xiao finally answers, Bo Yu surprises her by saying that Rui has disappeared. The next day, Xiao immediately goes to the bridge to search for Rui. Bo Yu accompanies her, but Xiao refuses to talk to him until she finds Rui, especially now that she knows about Bo Yu and Rui's relationship. Xiao also seeks her father's help in finding Rui. Meanwhile, Mr. Su contacts Xiao again, inviting her to meet. This meeting prompts Xiao to ask Mr. Su for assistance in finding Rui. However, Mr. Su behaves strangely this time, particularly when he asks Xiao if she likes her life in this world, leaving Xiao speechless. Mr. Su also gives Xiao a phone, urging her to use it. To Xiao's surprise, messages she sent to her father appear on Mr. Su's phone. Reluctantly, Xiao agrees to comply with Mr. Su's requests for her own safety. Later that night, Xiao receives a call from Mr. Su, informing her that Rui has been found. Suddenly, there's a disturbance in her room's lights and Xiao's phone network. Despite this, Xiao hears Mr. Su telling her to head to the dock within 15 minutes, crossing the river bridge. Without much thought, Xiao follows Mr. Su's instructions. However, halfway there, Xiao has an accident, falling into the river, coinciding with the activation of the lighthouse system. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chilian receives a signal on his phone identical to Xiao's, leading him to believe he'll find Jing Yang, who has been missing for years. At that moment, Xiao suddenly finds herself in an unfamiliar place, with a cut on her forehead. Not only that, but Xiao also discovers an ID card that doesn't match her real identity. She realizes she had an accident that caused her to fall into the river. Xiao decides to look for a way out, but her weak condition causes her to fall and lose consciousness. Luckily, Zhang saves Xiao. Zhang reassures Xiao and takes her to the city, calming her down. After a considerable journey, they arrive at a mini market where Xiao borrows a payphone to call her father. Unexpectedly, the phone connects to Qilian's cell phone, who happens to be there refueling his car. Unaware of this, Xiao is surprised to see that all the items and calendars in the market indicate the year 2018, despite Xiao believing it's already 2025. Frustrated, Xiao returns to the car, while Qilian is also present, but they don't cross paths or see each other. Later, after Xiao leaves, Qilian notices someone trying to contact him, but when he calls back, he realizes it's from a payphone. A woman had been trying to reach him on his cell phone, However, Chilian decides not to investigate further, as he's focused on finding Jing Yang. On the other hand, Xiao is still in disbelief about what happened to her, suddenly finding herself in 2018 and unable to contact anyone. Zhang invites Xiao to her home. Meanwhile, Chilian arrives at the location he was searching for, but finds no one. All he discovers is a blood stain on a rock, indicating that the person might be Jing Yang. In another scene, Xiao and Zhang arrive at Zhang's home, where Xiao is surprised by a young boy. They reach Zhang's house, but Zhang's daughter is unwelcoming to Xiao, with only Zhang showing care. In the middle of the night, Xiao continues to contemplate how to return home, even though it's a different year. Xiao decides to take a train back to her hometown with the money she has. The next day, Qilian continues to stare at a board listing participants in fight cases. Those who resolve the fights and those involved in them. He recalls his efforts to find the suddenly missing Jing Yang. Qilian is also convinced that the coordinates on his phone signal Jing Yang's presence. However, 
he still wonders whose blood he found at the coordinate point. On the other hand, Xiao struggles to adjust to the people's lives there, especially with Zhang's daughter's unkind behavior towards her. Suddenly, Zhang faints after a boy accidentally drops a flower pot from the second floor. Xiao panics and the residents rush Zhang to the hospital. Upon arriving at the hospital, Xiao waits for Zhang's daughter. When she arrives, Xiao wants to leave immediately, but Zhang's daughter pleads for Xiao's help with her mother. Initially hesitant, Xiao eventually agrees to help pay the hospital bill, even though they don't have enough money. Shortly after, Qilian unexpectedly appears and helps cover the hospital expenses, marking the beginning of Xiao and Qilian's encounter. Later, after leaving the hospital, Xiao is extremely hungry, but lacks money to buy food. Once again, Qilian comes across Xiao. Xiao assumes Qilian wants reimbursement for the hospital bill, prompting her to quickly leave. Before Xiao can distance herself further, Qilian inquires about the cut on her forehead, irritating Xiao since they are strangers. Xiao then experiences a severe headache, causing her to faint. Concerned, Qilian rushes Xiao to the hospital. Fortunately, Xiao is fine, but upon regaining consciousness, she doesn't express gratitude for Qilian's help. Instead, she suspects Qilian has ulterior motives, believing he approached her due to her beauty. Xiao reveals she is the daughter of the CEO of the Jiang Group, warning Qilian not to overstep boundaries. She tries to call her father, but her call connects to Qilian's phone, surprising Xiao. Qilian then reveals that Xiao's parents have passed away, and the Jiang Group doesn't exist, leaving Xiao bewildered. Despite Xiao's confusion, she decides to leave Qilian. However, she encounters a woman who bears a striking resemblance to her and implies that Xiao is in a parallel world, not seven years in the past. Realizing this, Xiao seeks answers to her confusion. Eventually, she heads to a river, hoping to return to her original world. However, her actions cause a commotion, and she is taken to the police station on suspicion of attempting suicide. Luckily, Qilian is there to help her. At that time, Xiao kept bumping into Qilian, and Qilian didn't stop following Xiao either. Unexpectedly, Qilian felt like Xiao recognized him. It turns out Qilian was Xiao's childhood friend in that world. Knowing this, Xiao still wanted to distance herself from Qilian. However, Xiao's attempts to get away kept failing until she found a way to escape through the women's restroom window. Luckily, Xiao succeeded in getting away from Qilian this time. In the evening, Xiao still felt very hungry. However, the money Xiao had could only afford her two-thirds of a rice dish without any side dishes. At the same time, Qilian was also there, but he only watched Xiao from afar without approaching her. Meanwhile, Xiao continued to cry while eating her meal because she didn't expect her fate to turn out like this. Later on, Xiao went job hunting to survive. Suddenly, a thief tried to steal Xiao's bag, but fortunately, Qilian noticed and came to Xiao's rescue. <laughs> Qilian also offered Xiao some money, but Xiao refused because she didn't want Qilian to pity her. This angered Xiao, and Qilian remained convinced that Xiao was pretending not to recognize him, even though Xiao genuinely didn't know who Qilian was. Eventually, Xiao reluctantly took the money. Qilian then escorted Xiao to stay at a hotel, where Xiao informed him that she would repay the money he gave her. After that, when Xiao entered the hotel to book a room, she was dismayed by the expensive prices. Eventually, Xiao stumbled upon a job advertisement for a cyber cafe manager that offered free meals and accommodation. This prompted Xiao to apply for the job immediately. Unbeknownst to Xiao, the hotel manager was Qilian's friend, and he informed Qilian of Xiao's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Xiao arrived at a cyber cafe where she was surprised to see other job applicants dressed quite provocatively. During her interview, Xiao was asked to sing and dance, which she wasn't skilled at. Xiao ended up applying for the wrong job, intending to work as a live streaming celebrity. Nevertheless, the boss accepted Xiao's employment because of her beauty. Xiao's duty was to manage the cyber cafe and serve customers, with her meals limited to instant noodles. Shortly after, Xiao's male friend arrived at the cyber cafe, sharing her fate. 
Xiao felt ecstatic because her friend knew the way back to their world. However, her friend asked Xiao to eat the food he brought first, which moved Xiao deeply. Unfortunately, it all turned out to be just a dream for Xiao. When Xiao woke up, she received a reprimand from her boss due to the cyber cafe's low income. Her boss also tried to flirt with her, but Xiao bravely stood up to him. Eventually, Xiao rested in a room there. On the other hand, Qilian and Shun continued searching for Xiao's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Xiao went out to buy food and looked for the phone charger Pak Shu had given her. Fortunately, Xiao found the charger and used it to charge her phone. Upon doing so, Xiao immediately contacted someone in hopes of being taken back home. However, her efforts failed and she was deceived by someone. Once again, Xiao was contacted by Qilian. Shortly after, Qilian finally found Xiao, but Xiao acted indifferently toward him. Even though Qilian cared deeply for her, believing her to be his good friend, with whom he hadn't met in years. In the following days, Xiao continued working at the cyber cafe, lamenting her misfortune. Qilian never stopped watching over and protecting Xiao. Then while Xiao was working, a man intentionally touched her, prompting Xiao to give him a lesson without any fear. However, Xiao was reprimanded by her boss for it, but she defiantly defended her actions as right. As a result, Xiao resigned from her job she demanded her pay, and although her boss initially refused, Xiao managed to make him pay her wages. Later, Xiao immediately contacted Kilian because she wanted to repay the money he had given her. After that, Xiao found herself at Qilian's house. However, because Qilian's house was too big, Xiao struggled to find him, accidentally kicking open his door in the process. Therefore, Xiao was able to enter Qilian's house, but Qilian wasn't there. Suddenly, Three men came looking for Qilian, and one of them behaved rudely toward Xiao. Shortly after, Qilian arrived, and upon his arrival, the three men immediately backed off. They had come to teach Qilian a lesson, because he had harmed their boss. However, Qilian quickly subdued them, causing them to flee. Witnessing this, Xiao was shocked and wanted to leave Qilian's side, fearing his abilities. However, Qilian tried to explain to Xiao that he was not like those men. Then, Qilian invited Xiao into his house, where he cooked food for her. Initially, Xiao thought Qilian might do something bad to her. As the night went on, they ate together. This time, Xiao eagerly enjoyed Qilian's cooking and began to think that Qilian wasn't as bad as she had thought. However, Xiao understood that Qilian's kindness was because he thought she was his good friend. While eating fruit, Xiao looked around Qilian's house and was frightened and surprised to find several gruesome pictures of dead people. This made Xiao want to run away, but Qilian stopped her as he wanted to take her somewhere. During the journey, Xiao had to hold Qilian tightly as he was riding his motorcycle too fast. Soon, they arrived at a place where Zhou welcomed Xiao warmly and Qilian left them. Surprisingly, Zhou also knew Xiao very well, but Xiao didn't recognize Zhou. Luckily, Zhou understood and brought Xiao around to see where she would work. This time, Xiao would work in Zhou's salon, but she had to start from scratch as a new employee. Reluctantly, Xiao accepted the job. Zhou also introduced her to a senior named Hai Lun, but Xiao didn't pay much attention, and Hai Lun seemed to dislike Xiao. Then, Zhou showed Xiao the employee dormitory, where she would share a room with Lily. Xiao learned that her relationship with Qilian was indeed very close, but she hadn't told Qilian about it when she was studying in Chongqing, which made Qilian very sad. Zhou couldn't understand why. Upon Xiao's return, she didn't recognize Qilian and wasn't kind to him. Afterward, Xiao went to rest, but she remembered Qilian's kindness and wanted to continue surviving until she could return to her world. The next day, Xiao started working, but she was already late on her first day. Zhou introduced her to some co-workers, and when Xiao started cleaning the salon, she made mistakes but ignored Hai Lun's reprimands. During lunchtime, none of Xiao's co-workers were friendly to her because of her arrogant attitude. Zhou tried to reason with Xiao, but Xiao remained indifferent, frustrating Zhou. Later, when Xiao was about to resume work, her co-workers played a prank on her, but it backfired. 
making them all feel very annoyed. In the evening, once again, Xiao met Chilian. This time, Chilian asked Xiao to go with him. At first, Xiao refused because she was really scared of Chilian's behavior that she witnessed at Chilian's house. But eventually, Xiao agreed to go with Chilian because Chilian continued to be kind to her. They went to a shopping center to buy clothes for Xiao, but Xiao refused because she didn't have money. Eventually, due to Chilian's insistence, Xiao reluctantly had to comply with Chilian's request. However, Chilian's choice of clothes was not suitable for Xiao at all. Eventually, Xiao found a cool jacket, and unexpectedly, Chilian immediately took off the brand of the jacket, which made them both in a very close position. This made Xiao look very nervous. When they paid for the clothes, Xiao was surprised again by the expensive price of the clothes, and Xiao had to pay for them. Then, they went home together. Before entering the dormitory, Xiao mentioned that she was surprised why Chilian was so kind. Xiao also remembered what Zhou had told her, that Chilian really cared about Xiao. However, Xiao felt afraid. What if Chilian found out that Xiao wasn't the person Chilian meant? Eventually, because of that fear, Xiao immediately entered the dormitory and left Chilian alone. The next day, Xiao went to work again. This time, Xiao began to think that something would happen to her, because one by one, Xiao's close friends in that world began to appear. Eventually, Xiao wanted to find the time-space door immediately so that she could return to her world. Then, Xiao and some of her co-workers were taught some salon techniques by Zhu, but Xiao failed to do them immediately. As a result, Zhou had to give the correct example in serving customers, which made them all laugh. After finishing, Zhou found Xiao reading about time travel, but Zhou still didn't know anything. He just kept asking Xiao to learn all the salon techniques well. On a different note, Qilian thought about Jing Yang again. Qilian also believed that Jing Yang was still in this world. However, Qilian wondered why the phone number on Qilian's phone was only known by Xiao. At that time, Zhou gave an evaluation announcement to all the new intern employees, and when the other employees passed, only Xiao didn't pass. This made Xiao protest directly to Zhou, even asking Zhou to teach her, because no other employee was willing to help Xiao. But Zhou, knowing how bad Xiao's salon techniques were, made excuses to get away from there. Later, Xiao went back to her job cleaning the salon, but suddenly Qilian was there. Qilian's presence surprised Xiao a lot. It turned out Qilian just wanted to take something from Zhou's room, and Qilian also had shares in the salon. Before leaving, Chilian asked about Xiao's job progress because Chilian knew Xiao hadn't passed the evaluation yet. That's why Chilian invited Xiao to follow him. Unexpectedly, Chilian wanted to teach Xiao hair washing techniques and Chilian was very good at it. But unknowingly, Xiao looked so nervous when Chilian did it to her. After finishing washing the hair, Chilian also immediately dried Xiao's hair and combed it. The lesson Chilian gave made Xiao confident that she would pass the next stage. Xiao also kept looking at Chilian as Chilian left. In the evening, Xiao started to feel happy with Chilian's treatment without realizing it. The next day, Xiao met Zhou again, this time asking if she had passed the evaluation stage. It turned out Xiao still hadn't passed, which made Xiao protest immediately because Xiao felt she had done everything correctly. This made Xiao even more determined to prove that she would pass in the last chance. But if Xiao still didn't pass, then Xiao would leave the salon without being asked by Zhou. Then, Xiao decided to find out how to improve her relationship with her co-workers. After knowing some ways, Xiao immediately practiced them, but none of Xiao's efforts succeeded. Until finally, Xiao was still alone without any friends with her. Then, Xiao took the initiative to treat coffee for everyone in the salon, but when Xiao was about to give the coffee, Xiao overheard some of her co-workers talking about her. Xiao even found out that Zhou could decide to approve employees, but Zhou deliberately made it difficult for Xiao. Finally, Xiao directly met Zhou and protested to him. All the complaints Xiao made prompted Zhou to tell Xiao that Zhou could indeed approve Xiao. But Xiao had to impress him with her work, which made Xiao immediately think about how to do it. The next day, Xiao dared to meet Chilian to become his student so that Zhu could pass Xiao as a permanent employee in his salon. 
But before Xiao could speak, Qilian already knew what Xiao was thinking because of Xiao's facial expression. Then, Xiao begged Qilian to teach her some massage techniques. Fortunately, Qilian was willing to teach Xiao and Qilian explained the massage in detail. After that, Qilian also took Xiao to meet a hairdresser. At first, Xiao refused, but Qilian kept insisting. It turned out the hairdresser just styled Xiao's hair beautifully. Xiao looked very happy about it and even thanked Qilian because she felt confident she would pass the next selection. Suddenly, Xiao's words reminded Qilian of his good friend, Xiao. This made Qilian approach Xiao and hold her shoulder tightly, wondering why Xiao was pretending not to know him. This made Qilian immediately leave Xiao. Then, they had a meal together. This time, Xiao felt scared again, afraid that Qilian would find out that she wasn't the good friend Qilian thought she was, even though Qilian had treated her so well. Finally, Xiao dared to tell Qilian the truth that she was a space-time traveler and not the person Qilian knew because they had different lives and backgrounds. But Qilian didn't believe Xiao's words because Xiao's habits were so similar to the Xiao he knew. Later, when Xiao went to the bathroom, she kept talking to herself, admitting that she told Qilian the truth because she didn't want to take advantage of him with a false identity. When Xiao came out of the bathroom, she suddenly heard a man mistreating a woman introduced to his family. Knowing this, Xiao immediately took the woman away with her and told her the truth, but the woman didn't believe Xiao's words. It turned out, the woman was Oki, Xiao's co-worker. The next day, Xiao went back to work. This time, Xiao washed Zhou's hair with the techniques taught by Qilian. Fortunately, Xiao's efforts paid off this time and Xiao became a permanent employee at Zhou's salon, which made Xiao very happy. At that time, Xiao wanted to meet Qilian to thank him for helping her pass the evaluation. However, Qilian was on a business trip, so he asked Xiao to wait for his return and they would have dinner together. In the evening, Qilian arrived in Baiyang City where he met an old woman who turned out to be Xiao's grandmother. This time, Xiao's grandmother asked Qilian about Xiao's whereabouts. The next evening, Qilian wanted to have dinner with Xiao. But before approaching Xiao, Qilian remembered what Xiao's grandmother had said, that Xiao hadn't visited her for a year, even though Xiao had tried hard to find money when her grandmother fell ill a year ago. Then, Qilian approached Xiao, but he felt that something had changed in her. However, he thought that the change was due to something negative. Qilian couldn't control himself and still believed that Xiao was pretending. This confused Xiao, especially since she didn't know the true story of her and Qilian's relationship in that world. Eventually, Qilian left Xiao, but she followed him and continued to try to make him understand that she was not the person he thought she was. Xiao just wanted them to be good friends without anyone feeling hurt. When Qilian gave Xiao an umbrella, she pulled him to avoid getting rained on more which led to Qilian hugging her. Qilian began to understand Xiao and they agreed to remain good friends. Later, when Xiao returned to the dormitory, she felt calmer because she could still find good friends like Qilian. The next day, Xiao went back to work as usual. However, she almost got into trouble because she didn't understand the seniority rules there. Eventually, Oki tried to make Xiao understand it. After some time passed without any guests wanting to use Xiao's services, Oki kindly gave her a client. When Xiao served the client, they were very satisfied with her performance. Xiao then asked Oki to work harder together to improve their work. After some time, their efforts paid off. And several guests kept looking for them, which made their co-workers, especially the senior Z, very annoyed. In the evening, Xiao met Qilian and told him about her success, which made her very happy. But Qilian just listened to all of Xiao's stories. The next day, Xiao returned to work and she was with Zhou. Zhou acknowledged Xiao's talent and even supported her to keep improving her skills so she could eventually hold a higher position. Meanwhile, Ling was serving a special guest who was looking for Hailun. 
While waiting, the guest asked Ling to bring him a cake without peanut sauce due to his peanut allergy. Suddenly, Ling asked Xiao to serve the guest instead. Initially, everything seemed normal, but when Xiao brought the cake for the guest, Oki appeared a bit different. This time, Oki warned Xiao to stop boasting about her work achievements to Ling. However, Xiao ignored it. Before leaving, Oki wanted to inform Xiao about the cake she brought, but Ling stopped her. It turned out Ling had something planned for Xiao. Ling intentionally made the guest angry at Xiao because Xiao gave him a cake with peanut sauce. Realizing Ling's actions, Xiao immediately confronted her, leading to an argument between them. Eventually, Hailun intervened and penalized both Xiao and Ling by canceling their promotion quotas. Xiao protested, but she couldn't do anything about it. Later, Xiao sat alone, and Oki approached her. This time, Oki felt guilty towards Xiao but couldn't do anything because she was also threatened by Ling. However, Xiao was already disappointed in Oki because she trusted her so much. Xiao then decided to find a way back to her world. She stumbled upon a case of a missing person from a few years ago. But when Xiao looked into the person's whereabouts, she felt something strange, as if she were in a place filled with fear. <laughs> After that, Xiao suddenly woke up and found herself in the hospital, with Qilian by her side. It turned out the doctor said Xiao was just exhausted. Qilian continued to help take care of Xiao, and Xiao thanked him for his kindness. The next day, a video of Xiao and Ling's fight went viral, but everyone accused Xiao of instigating it, even though she had no knowledge of it. Even Zhou was angry with Xiao for the alleged actions. Eventually, Xiao decided to resign from the salon. At that time, Xiao was waiting at the bus stop, hoping to meet someone who knew about time travel. She really hoped she could return to her world because she only had very little money left. On the other hand, Qilian was getting ready to leave. Surprisingly, Qilian was the one who made the appointment with Xiao. During the journey, Zhou contacted Qilian and informed him that Xiao had run away from the salon. This prompted Qilian to immediately search for Xiao. Meanwhile, Xiao was already at the city square cafe, waiting patiently. However, she didn't meet the person until late at night. Eventually, Xiao tried borrowing a tablet from the cafe to check for any messages, but there was none. Feeling deceived, Xiao left and accidentally left her phone at the cafe. Later, Xiao sat alone on a rooftop looking extremely confused about what to do. Eventually, she threw herself into a puddle of water out of frustration. On the other side, Chilian just arrived at the cafe and was shocked to find out that someone else, Xiao, also had the same phone as him. This revelation made Chilian finally believe that Xiao truly traveled through time and wasn't the friend he knew. In a different scene, Xiao was walking alone under heavy rain, feeling lost and directionless. She even imagined her previous life, which made her hysterical. At the same time, Qilian was searching for her. And when Xiao was almost hit by a car, Qilian saved her. Qilian's presence and help made Xiao hug him tightly. Xiao cried, expressing her inability to return to her world. However, unexpectedly, Qilian's demeanor suddenly changed. He invited Xiao to take shelter and talk. Initially, Xiao thought Qilian was angry about the accusations against her at the salon and tried to explain. But Qilian no longer understood Xiao's nature because he found out she was a time traveler. Qilian also had the same phone as Xiao. It was then that Xiao realized the person who made the appointment was Qilian. Qilian was harsh with Xiao, believing she was responsible for the disappearance. They argued and Qilian was not hesitant to hurt Xiao emotionally. Then, Qilian took Xiao to a place where she first woke up a month ago. There, someone sent a signal to Qilian, and he asked Xiao about Jingyang, referring to Pak Shu. Realizing Jingyang was still alive, Qilian pressured Xiao to return to her world and bring him back, even though Xiao didn't know how to. This made Xiao feel that Qilian didn't care if she lost her life, valuing her friendship with Qilian and Jingyang more than her own life. Saddened by this, Xiao decided to jump into the river, just like the first time she came to that world. However, Qilian stopped her, choosing to investigate instead. They argued, with Xiao refusing to follow Qilian's orders. 
Eventually, Xiao reluctantly agreed to return to work at the salon and play her part convincingly. The next day, Chilian escorted Xiao back to the salon. He also informed Xiao that he would help her return, but Xiao must not arouse suspicion. Then, Xiao went straight to Zhou. Her sudden return made Zhou keep complaining because Xiao had suddenly run away from the salon and didn't take responsibility for her actions. However, Xiao didn't rebel at all. She even obeyed Zhou's orders regarding her demotion. Realizing this, Zhou felt very sorry for Xiao. Then, Xiao immediately started her task of cleaning the salon. However, Xiao still felt very sad, especially remembering Chilian's indifference towards her. The following day, Xiao continued to work, but she seemed to have lost all her enthusiasm. However, Zhou continued to support Xiao to rise again, especially since the salon would hold promotions for all salon employees to get promoted. After Xiao left, Zhou contacted Chilian to inform him about Xiao's condition, but Chilian completely ignored Xiao. In the evening, Xiao, who had just returned from work, met Chilian again. This time, Chilian reminded Xiao not to make Zhu suspicious, but Xiao didn't want to listen to Chilian's orders because Chilian couldn't control his emotions. Chilian also asked Xiao to take the promotional exam that the salon would hold. Then, when Xiao was about to rest, she remembered all the people who had ever underestimated her. Finally, Xiao decided to rise again and prove to everyone that she could do it. Not stopping there, in the following days, Xiao continued to learn until she no longer prioritized resting. At that time, Zhou was surprised to see Xiao sleeping in his room. And even his room was in a mess because Xiao kept practicing haircutting. Finally, Zhou asked Xiao to leave and rest, but suddenly Xiao fainted. This shocked Zhou, who quickly took Xiao to his dormitory. When Xiao regained consciousness, she immediately wanted to return to the salon. This puzzled Zhou as to why Xiao was so ambitious. It turned out, Xiao just wanted to try not to be ignored by others, which made Zhou feel very sorry for her. In the evening, Chilian visited Xiao again, bringing food for her. However, Chilian still acted harshly towards Xiao, showing concern only for her physical well-being. Xiao reluctantly obeyed Chilian's orders with a heavy heart. This situation reminded Chilian of his good friend Xiao, but over time, Xiao began to vent her anger on Chilian, leading to an argument. Xiao dared to confront Chilian, because the situation she was experiencing was not what she wanted. However, Chilian became angry with her. Then, Chilian received a call from someone, while Xiao went into the room feeling very sad. Chilian was informed that Xiao's grandmother, who was also Chilian's good friend, was seriously ill. This prompted Chilian to ask for Xiao's help, but Xiao refused because no one had comforted her, and she didn't understand why she should comfort others, especially since she had grown up alone as her parents had never cared for her. This made Chilian remember his own life, which was similar to Xiao's, and he understood her. Chilian then made a decision not to ask Xiao for help anymore, but he hoped Xiao would consider it. Not long after, Xiao contacted Chilian's good friend, Xiao's grandmother. Xiao felt very sad because she realized that her grandmother loved her very much, even though Xiao had never felt a grandmother's love before. After that, Chilian showed his care for Xiao again, as he was trying to help Xiao return home and asked her not to overwork herself. Then, Xiao returned to the salon to continue learning. Zhou, who knew about Xiao's efforts, was very surprised. Eventually, Zhou taught Xiao some techniques to avoid continuously making mistakes in haircutting and in the following days, Xiao continued to learn tirelessly. A few days later, it was time for the promotion exam. Hailun, Zhou, and Chilian were the judges. After the exam, Xiao and Oki were the ones who made it to the next round. However, some people there still doubted Xiao's skills. Then, during the practical exam, Xiao encountered a problem when the hair curler she used suddenly broke due to her carelessness in not checking it beforehand. However, Xiao came up with a brilliant idea that helped her complete the task well. Despite this, Xiao didn't pass the exam because Chilian, annoyed by Xiao's slight mistake, didn't approve. Eventually, Oki won the exam. 
。这次的获胜者是小 K。Meanwhile, Xiao chased after Chilian, but this time she wasn't angry at all because she knew Chilian couldn't acknowledge her greatness and kept underestimating her. Xiao realized that Chilian always thought she was taking advantage of everything her good friend had. All of this made Xiao more confident that she could survive in the salon with her own abilities. At that moment, the truth suddenly came out. Ling had helped Oki cheat in the promotion exam. This caused Ling and Zhou to argue because Zhou realized Ling's evil deed. Eventually, Zhou decided to declare Xiao the winner of the exam. This time, the winner is Jiang Xiaoyuan. The next day, Xiao received a call from Chilian, who invited her to meet an old friend of hers in that world. Xiao initially refused Chilian's invitation, but Chilian didn't care and wanted to discuss Xiao's phone. In the evening, Chilian and Xiao met up. Xiao looked very beautiful, and she gave Chilian some money to repay him for buying clothes for her before. Then they went together to meet their old friends. When they arrived, they were warmly welcomed by their friends. Chilian introduced each of their friends to Xiao, but Ding started picking a fight with Xiao for no apparent reason. Xiao couldn't hold back her anger, even though she didn't recognize Ding. Her anger peaked because she felt that Xiao's presence there only made things difficult for her. Later, Chilian took Xiao back to his house, where they discussed an agreement. Xiao would take care of herself and always behave well. While Chilian would help find a way for Xiao to return to her world, they both agreed to this and even made a written agreement. After that, Chilian took Xiao to a room to discuss Xiao's phone. This time, Chilian felt that there was something strange that they needed to figure out, which made Xiao feel scared. Eventually, Chilian wanted to try to see what was on the phone. He also took the phone to someone who could help them, Chanzi. There. Chianzi immediately found a tracking device on Xiao's phone, which shocked them. After some time, they managed to locate someone who was tracking Xiao's phone, prompting them to search for that person. During the journey, Xiao kept thinking about something far away. She believed that Old was the mastermind behind it all, and that he deliberately sent Xiao to that world. However, they hadn't found any answers yet. Kilian tried to calm Xiao down because they still couldn't draw any conclusions. Not long after, they arrived at a mall. There, Chilian would search for the point they obtained, while Xiao was asked to wait for Chilian to return. However, Chilian failed to find the person, even though he had followed where the mysterious person went. Xiao, on the other hand, felt that the person was nearby. When Chilian returned to Xiao, she still thought that they were looking for Jing Yang. This annoyed Chilian a bit, and they decided to leave. During the journey. Xiao kept wondering about the true purpose of everything that happened to her. Meanwhile, the mysterious man Chilian met was reporting something to a woman in a special and hidden room. Zhang Xiaoyuan. The woman seemed to recognize Xiao very well. At that time, Xiao was helping Lily's boyfriend, who asked Xiao to be his client's makeup artist. Meanwhile, Chilian was informed about the progress of the tracker. Which shed some light on the situation. Hearing this news, Chilian immediately wanted to meet Xiao. However, Xiao was neither at the salon nor at the dormitory, which made Chilian worry about her safety. It turned out that Xiao had gone to get some makeup supplies to help Lily's friend. There, Xiao thought about her time with Rui. Later, Xiao met Chilian in heavy snowfall. However. Xiao wanted to leave without greeting Chilian, even though Chilian was concerned about her. Xiao understood that Chilian's worry wasn't for her. Then Chilian told Xiao about the progress of the tracker, revealing that it was produced by a company in Chongqing. This made Chilian want to go there to gather more information. Xiao wanted to accompany Chilian, but he refused, fearing for her safety. Xiao then hurried to Lily's boyfriend's studio. With Chilian following her, they finally arrived at the studio, where Chilian appeared slightly jealous when Lily's boyfriend held Xiao's hand. Saka. Chilian even initially refused to let Xiao assist Lily's boyfriend, so Xiao asked Lily to explain to Chilian. 
Xiao then started dressing up the clients there, showing remarkable skill. After finishing, Xiao was about to leave when Chilian suddenly gave her some medicine for her flu. They went home together, and on the way, Xiao bought hot chocolate for Chilian as a thank you gesture. Xiao reminded Chilian not to waste time worrying about her because they weren't close. Xiao only asked Chilian to keep trying to find a way for her to return and for them to meet the Xiao he knew. Xiao danced in the snow, leaving Chilian watching her. Before leaving, Xiao wished Chilian a Merry Christmas. In the evening, Chilian was dining with Zhou when Zhou remembered a photo studio wanting to recruit Xiao. Zhou was very upset about this, but fortunately, Xiao hadn't planned to change jobs. Zhou asked Chilian to help Xiao stay at their salon. Shortly after, Xiao arrived and pretended to be sick, teasing Zhou. Xiao also gave Zhou an idea to add makeup services to the salon, which Zhou didn't immediately approve because it required permission from the head office. Afterward, Chilian took Xiao back to the dormitory. Before they parted ways, Chilian admitted Xiao's talent in makeup. However, Xiao insisted she didn't want to waste her time there, even though it wasn't her original world. Nevertheless, Chilian continued to support Xiao's talent. The next day, Zhou gathered some employees, including Xiao, to recruit someone for makeup training in Chongqing. None of Zhou's employees were willing, leaving only Xiao standing. Reluctantly, Zhou decided to appoint Xiao for the training. A few days later, Xiao began her journey to Chongqing. Suddenly, she met Chilian, who was also heading to Chongqing, to gather information about the tracker. Initially, they sat facing each other, but they had to move because two elders wanted their seats. Eventually, they sat side by side. They soon arrived in Chongqing. Before parting ways, Chilian gave Xiao a phone so he could contact her and even gave her an umbrella. Xiao then arrived at the training location where she met other trainees, but they found their mentor, Jiang Bo, to be quite indifferent. At that time, Xiao felt that the makeup training was just a formality, even deceiving the company, because the material provided was very lightweight. At the same time, Xiao received a message from Chilian, informing her that he would investigate the company that created the tracker. Knowing this, Xiao immediately rushed to join him. However, Xiao was reprimanded by Zhang Bo, leading to a heated argument between them. Eventually, they made a deal. If Xiao could do Jiang Bo's makeup well, she would be allowed to leave without affecting her class attendance. Xiao then began to do Jiang Bo's makeup, and surprisingly, her work made Jiang Bo look handsome. Consequently, Xiao left the class immediately after. Later, Xiao and Qilian were at the Beishan Electronics Company. There, they had to disguise themselves so that Mr. Zhong, the company owner, wouldn't suspect them. Initially, they almost succeeded in getting the information they needed. And Mr. Zhong admitted that a few years ago, there was a laboratory that had collaborated with them. However, when Mr. Zhong went to retrieve the documents about the lab, they were gone, and someone intentionally injured him, sending him to the hospital. This situation puzzled Chilian and Xiao. Eventually, Chilian decided to take Xiao away, believing that someone was deliberately obstructing them from finding the truth and a way out of the problem. Chilian also suspected that the same person was responsible for what happened to Mr. Zhong. Understanding the danger, Chilian advised Xiao not to accompany him in the investigation. After that, they were in a certain place where Xiao was about to say goodbye and return to her accommodation. But before leaving, Chilian informed Xiu that the tracker only lasted for a year. Xiao understood immediately that the experimental world would also last for a year, and after that, she would be able to return to her own world. This news made Xiao very happy. Therefore, Chilian asked Xiao to do what she liked, while he would continue to try to find a way out. Shortly after Xiao left, someone was suddenly watching Chilian. Chilian immediately noticed this and asked Old for help in watching over Mr. Zhang at the hospital. The next day, Xiao attended the training class again. Jiang Bo asked Xiao to practice eyebrow shaping. Before the practice began, Xiao commented on Jiang Bo's wrong instructions. As a result, Xiao used her own methods and techniques. However, after several attempts, Jiang Bo was still not satisfied with Xiao's results. 
This led to another debate between them, with Zhang Bo eventually asking Xiao to leave the class. Later, when the class ended, Xiao confronted Zhang Bo about being kicked out. They argued again, each belittling the other. Surprisingly, Zhang Bo's words reminded Xiao of Rui. Shortly after, Qilian arrived, and Zhang Bo immediately left them both. After that, Xiao returned to the inn, where she continued studying because she was confident that she could do makeup well. She even ignored Zhou's calls because she was so focused. Later in the evening, Qilian also called Xiao, inviting her to have dinner together. Xiao arrived at the place earlier and was already doing makeup for the workers there when Qilian showed up. Qilian's arrival annoyed Xiao a bit because he mentioned reporting Xiao's behavior to Zhu, which led to Zhou wanting to replace Xiao in the makeup training. Xiao strongly disagreed with this, so she never answered Zhou's calls. Surprisingly, Qilian was just teasing Xiao. Moreover, Qilian updated Xiao about Mr. Zhong's condition. Fortunately, Mr. Zhong had passed the critical stage. The next day, Xiao attended the training class again, even wearing a mask to avoid upsetting Zhang Bo. She then began practicing makeup, which continued into the following day. In the evening, while Xiao was getting ready, Qilian approached her in her room. Xiao's immediate response surprised Qilian, who became quite nervous. It turned out Xiao did it deliberately to test her seductive makeup skills. The next evening, Qilian and Xiao were sitting on rocks, chatting with each other. Their lives were quite similar as their busy parents often neglected them. Xiao didn't know the meaning of her life, but in that world, she felt warmth and learned many new things. However, she still wanted to return to her original place because she realized it wasn't her world. Qilian then gave Xiao ice cream, knowing how much she loved it. This gesture deeply touched Xiao. At that time, Xiao accidentally overheard Qilian and Mr. Kai's conversation. It turned out that the new makeup business proposal wasn't well received by the company. However, Qilian still wanted to pursue it because he wanted to see people who were struggling to achieve results from their efforts and not give up easily after completing their training. But Mr. Kai still disagreed. Eventually, Qilian suggested that Mr. Kai should conduct a final makeup exam after the training is finished, and the number of participants passing the exam would determine the continuation of the business. Mr. Kai agreed to this proposal. However, if all participants passed the exam, there would be a rule that the business would continue. Xiao heard everything Mr. Kai and Qilian discussed clearly and immediately informed her friends about it. Xiao also encouraged them all. Eventually, they started practicing, and Xiao even canceled her dinner appointment with Qilian because she wanted to practice and not disappoint Qilian's efforts. Several days later, the final makeup exam day arrived. This time, Jiang Bo and several other judges were already there. Unexpectedly, the exam questions given to them were very difficult, but Xiao still encouraged her friends, saying they would surely succeed. Then, the exam began, and Xiao was the first participant to finish. With some time left, Xiao helped guide her friends. After a while, the exam ended, and the judges started giving their evaluations. But unexpectedly, Jiang Bo announced that Xiao was disqualified because she had helped other friends. This decision led to protests from all participants. Eventually, Jiang Bo announced his evaluation results alone, without the consensus of other judges. At that moment, Jiang Bo praised Xiao's skills highly, and Xiao was declared the outstanding participant. This made everyone very happy. Zhou was also pleased with Xiao's achievement, and Qilian felt the same way. Xiao even learned that the business proposal was Qilian's idea. Then, they took a group photo, but accidentally Xiao fell because of a push from some other friends. Fortunately, Qilian immediately helped Xiao, and unintentionally, Xiao's lipstick left a mark on Qilian's cheek. After that, Qilian took Xiao to a special place where he surprised her with an ice cream truck to reminisce about her childhood. This made Xiao very happy. Xiao also invited Qilian to take a photo together, and this time, they looked very close to each other. Xiao wanted to print the photo as a keepsake of their memories. Oh. 
And when Xiao was about to leave, she found Qilian wasn't there. But she noticed Qilian watching her from the hilltop, which reminded Qilian of their beautiful memories, leaving him confused. The next day, Xiao returned to the salon, where she was given a new position due to her success. However, Hailun was not happy about Xiao's position because it was equivalent to hers. Therefore, Xiao decided to take on the responsibility of the performance indicator, even though it was a significant responsibility. Zhou also protested about it, but Xiao still accepted it. Therefore, Zhou could only accept Xiao if Xiao needed his help. On the other hand, Qilian was visiting Mr. Zhong in the hospital, where he also met some of Mr. Zhong's students. When the students left, Qilian began talking to Mr. Zhong. However, when Qilian wanted to leave Mr. Zhong's room, he accidentally stepped on a piece of broken glass bottle and found a listening device under Mr. Zhong's bed. Qilian immediately asked the police to investigate the matter. Then, Qilian asked Mr. Zhong who the student was who broke the bottle and stooped to clean up the glass shards because that student might have placed the listening device there. It turned out that the student's name was Boyu. Knowing this information, Qilian immediately contacted Old to find out who Boyu really was. And this time, Qilian found out that Boyu was Xiao's boyfriend during college. At that moment, Xiao was walking alone when suddenly a mysterious man started following her. But Xiao didn't notice him. Luckily, Qilian arrived just in time and gave the man a lesson. But the man managed to escape from Qilian. Shortly after, Xiao contacted Qilian because she saw him there. But Qilian lied saying he was still in Chongqing. After Xiao returned to the dormitory, Qilian informed her that their investigation at Mr. Zhang's company was temporarily suspended due to a lack of further information. Xiao immediately contacted Qilian and reminded him to be careful. However, Xiao felt that Qilian was hiding something from her and even his behavior seemed to change slightly. But Qilian still asked Shang to look after Xiao because he was very concerned about her safety. Later, Chilian, still at home, kept wondering about Boyu's appearance. Chilian also got information from Shang about Boyu's whereabouts in the city. Finally, Chilian decided to meet Boyu. When he arrived at the hotel room, Chilian couldn't find Boyu. It turned out Boyu knew about Chilian's arrival and immediately hid. Then, Chilian decided to ask Old to gather information about Boyu because he realized Boyu was avoiding him and believed Boyu was related to Xiao's problem. Meanwhile, Boyu received orders to bring Xiao back. At night, while Xiao was on the phone, she suddenly realized someone was following her. It was Shang. Luckily, Xiao didn't hurt Shang. At that moment, Xiao learned that Shang's actions were because Chilian had assigned him the task. Additionally, Shang accidentally mentioned Xiao's ex-boyfriend, but Xiao didn't pay much attention to it. The next day, Xiao met with Zhu and showed him a self-made makeup promotion video. Knowing this, Zhou was very supportive of Xiao. Some even contacted Lily to book their salon services. Xiao handled the job very professionally, and she kept learning. Then, Xiao sent several messages to Qilian, but received no response. Later, Xiao and Lily were going home from work together when Lily asked about Qilian. Lily's questions made Xiao realize that Qilian had actually returned from Chongqing, and Lily also felt that Qilian was having problems. This prompted Xiao to meet Qilian. When they met, Xiao immediately expressed her feelings that Qilian seemed to be avoiding her, but Qilian didn't admit it. Finally, Xiao vented her disappointment to Qilian, feeling that their relationship in this world was hindering their investigation, especially since Xiao's ex-boyfriend had reappeared causing Chilian to lose focus due to his own emotional turmoil. Therefore, Xiao decided to do everything herself without Chilian's help. And they even argued until Xiao ignored Chilian's suspicions about her ex-boyfriend. Xiao continued to draw her own conclusions, believing that everything she experienced was Pak Shu's doing, and that Chilian, her good friend, and her ex-boyfriend were all part of Pak Shu's scheme. As a result, Xiao left Qilian feeling angry and disappointed. Upon returning to the dormitory, 
Xiao tore up the agreement she had made with Qilian and retrieved the phone Pak Xu had given her. The next day, Xiao went back to work as usual. This time, Xiao was confused about how to achieve her targets as agreed. Lily and Oki were there to help Xiao. Suddenly, luck came to Xiao because Jiang Bo contacted her and offered her a high-paying job. This made Xiao very happy. Later, Xiao went to meet manager Kui to discuss the job. There, Xiao learned that the makeup task assigned to her was quite complicated. Xiao was asked to go to a place to meet her client, and to her surprise, she saw Rui, whose attitude was very bad. Xiao boldly approached Rui and tried to make her realize her bad attitude, but Rui ended up slapping Xiao for her boldness. Xiao retaliated, and Rui recognized Xiao. Rui turned out to be the client manager Kui mentioned. All of this surprised Xiao greatly. At that time, Xiao reluctantly apologized to Rui for her behavior, but Rui was extremely cruel. She demanded Xiao to drink a lot of alcohol so that she would agree to discuss work with her. At first, Xiao complied with Rui's request, but eventually, she gathered the courage to stand up to Rui. Xiao even pointed out that it would be Rui who would suffer if she didn't agree to the job. However, as Xiao was about to leave, suddenly, some of Rui's friends appeared and cornered Xiao, accusing her of stealing Boyu, Rui's boyfriend. This further confused Xiao, but she eventually realized that in this world, she was the woman who stole Rui's boyfriend, and Rui was from the same world as her. The commotion made Xiao feel so dizzy that she fainted. At the same time, Qilian was there, and seeing Xiao's condition, he immediately took her away from there. During the journey, Xiao kept grumbling, even though she was drunk. She expressed her gratitude to Qilian for always helping her, although she was still annoyed with him because he disregarded her feelings for the sake of their friendship. Unbeknownst to Xiao, she also accidentally mentioned how good Qilian smelled, and Qilian recorded all of Xiao's expressions as per her request because Xiao felt she wouldn't be able to endure for much longer. Then, they arrived at the hospital where Xiao received treatment. However, Xiao was too restless, making it a bit difficult for Qilian to take care of her. Suddenly, Xiao grabbed Qilian's hand, and Qilian kept looking at her. Their hand-holding didn't stop until Xiao woke up, and realizing what happened made Xiao smile. However, Xiao accidentally woke up Qilian and immediately let go of his hand. Xiao then told Qilian about her encounter with Rui, Surprisingly, Chilian also knew Rui and informed Xiao that they were being watched by Boyu. Learning all this only added to their confusion, because the people in Xiao's world were also in Chilian's world, but their stories were slightly different. Finally, Chilian wanted to discuss things further with Xiao, but Xiao refused. Because of this, Chilian had to play the recording of Xiao's drunken state, as he wanted to ask Xiao to cooperate with him again. However, Xiao continued to show that Qilian desperately wanted her, his good friend, to return to that world because Qilian still couldn't move on from her. This led to another argument between them because Qilian wasn't like Xiao, who could easily forget someone she liked. Unbeknownst to Xiao, she looked annoyed, as Qilian really wanted to help her return and meet the person she loved. But in reality, Xiao wanted to return to her own world. Xiao's attitude really confused Qilian but he still promised to help her. This made Xiao very happy. The next day, manager Kui met Xiao again because Rui suddenly wanted to continue the work contract with Xiao. At first, Xiao was surprised by this, but still accepted their collaboration. Zhou, who knew about this, was a little worried about Xiao because she was getting a significant payment for the job. At night, Qilian went to see Xiao still at the salon. This time, Qilian was amazed by Xiao's transformation as she continued to learn, and her progress was excellent. Then, when Xiao ate the gum Qilian gave her, he remembered the memories they shared as good friends. Xiao also told Qilian that she appreciated everything she had because she had worked so hard to get it. Xiao could only feel all that when she became poor. Even though in her original world, Xiao already had everything she wanted. After that, Qilian went back home, still confused about what Jing Yang was doing. Even though Jing Yang intentionally sent Xiao to that world, Qilian still wanted to bring Xiao back to her original world. 
The next day, Xiao met with manager Kui to discuss the makeup sketch she made, but it didn't match the client's dress. Shortly after, Rui also appeared, but she immediately underestimated Xiao's skills. This didn't make Xiao angry at all because she remained professional with Rui and put aside their personal issues. At that time, Xiao was meeting Chilian at a restaurant. There, Xiao asked Chilian's opinion about her makeup design. Suddenly, Xiao noticed a chubby man misbehaving towards other customers. Xiao immediately called him out, which made the man want to teach her a lesson. However, Chilian intervened and dealt with the man first. This incident indirectly inspired Xiao that a person's face reflects their personality. Xiao wanted to improve her design, but Chilian advised against it, noting how hard Xiao had already worked and that she needed rest. So Chilian suggested Xiao meet with all the theater performers to get a better idea for her design. Xiao agreed happily. The next day, Xiao was at the theater building, trying to learn about the characters from the actors. Unfortunately, her attempts weren't successful as no one wanted to spare time for her interview. Undeterred, Xiao waited for Xi to finish his work at a mini market. Xi was impressed by Xiao's efforts, despite her affluent appearance. Xiao received advice from Xi about her makeup, and she planned to meet with all the theater performers to match her designs with their characters. The following day, Xiao arrived early at the theater building. There, she not only observed each character's details, but also assisted the theater team. While Xiao was interviewing someone, Chilian showed up and insisted on taking Xiao home. During the journey, Xiao shared her experiences of the day, appearing very happy. Chilian gave Xiao a bottle of drink, which turned out to be pear fruit soup, prepared by Chilian knowing Xiao wasn't feeling well. Xiao found Chilian's care unusual but heartwarming. Xiao even jokingly asked if Chilian's kindness was because he liked her, leaving Chilian speechless. While Xiao continued to appear joyful, Chilian informed her that Boyu had left the city, which eased Chilian's mind a bit. The next day, Xiao returned to the theater building. This time, she was tasked with doing makeup for all the actors. Rui was also present, but she displayed a strong dislike toward Xiao. They even argued because of Rui's unprofessional behavior and lack of respect for her colleagues. The day after, Xiao received bad news from manager Kui. Rui decided to replace the theater makeup artist. Although disappointed, Xiao wasn't discouraged. Unfortunately, she received more bad news from Zhou, who informed her that their makeup business had to be stopped. This deeply disappointed Xiao as she had worked hard to advance the business and she excelled in it. Later, Xiao sat alone in front of the salon when Chilian appeared. Chilian knew about the company's decision but was actively trying to defend the business. Learning this, Xiao couldn't believe Rui's actions, especially after all their efforts. Xiao couldn't hold back her tears, remembering her struggles with Lily to advance the makeup business. The next day, Xiao kept to herself, evoking sympathy from her co-workers. Shortly after, manager Kui contacted Xiao again. This time, they urgently needed a makeup artist due to Rui's pickiness. Remembering the performer's hard work, Xiao agreed to help them. Xiao's arrival sparked another argument with Rui, but Xiao's words reminded Rui of their friendship, leading Rui to leave. Xiao focused on her makeup work as the theater performance was about to start. Fortunately, Xiao successfully completed the makeup and the theater performance went smoothly. Xiao was amazed by their performance and even called Chilian to invite him for a meal. Unexpectedly, Xiao bumped into Boyu at the venue, leaving her shocked. At that moment, Xiao was truly surprised to find out that Boyu was her ex-boyfriend from her original world, and his presence there was to take Xiao back home with him. Initially, Xiao didn't believe Boyu until he showed her a phone identical to hers. Only then did Xiao trust what Boyu said. However, at the same time, Chilian was also there. Chilian's presence made Boyu hurry to leave, fearing that Chilian would catch him, which would complicate things further. Therefore, Boyu asked Xiao to keep their meeting a secret from Chilian. Luckily, Xiao agreed to Boyu's request, but Chilian eventually found out about Boyu's presence, leading him to chase after Boyu. 
Although Boyu initially escaped, Shang ended up helping Chilian by providing information about Boyu's whereabouts. In the evening, Xiao was with all the theater members, celebrating their achievements and thanking Xiao for her help. Suddenly, Rui appeared and wanted to talk to Xiao. It turned out that Rui no longer hated Xiao, but their relationship remained strained, although it was slowly improving that night. Meanwhile, Shang was waiting for Chilian. This time, Shang informed Chilian about Boyu's presence, making Chilian realize that Xiao was hiding Boyu from him. This left Chilian wondering why Xiao would do such a thing. On the other hand, Xiao sat alone, reminiscing about what Boyu had told her. She felt it was time to return home, but memories of her time with Chilian and her friends flooded her mind, making her very sad. Shortly after, Chilian arrived to keep Xiao company. Chilian asked if Xiao was hiding something from him, but Xiao refused to admit the truth. Instead, she tried to change the subject by suggesting they buy ice cream. They walked together, chatting along the way. Xiao expressed how much she would miss Chilian once she returned home. When Xiao finally left, she even dared to touch Chilian's cheek. Chilian asked about Boyu, and although Xiao didn't reveal everything she knew, Chilian was upset that Xiao hadn't told him the truth, making him feel like she didn't trust him. Despite Xiao's insistence that Chilian shouldn't waste his time on her, Chilian knew he only did things for Xiao's sake in that world. Eventually, they went home together. Back at home, Chilian listened to the recording of Xiao when she was drunk. He wanted to delete it, but hesitated. The next day, Chilian was summoned by the police. This time, they asked Chilian about Boyu, who was now wanted by the Chongqing police for stealing documents from Mr. Zhang's company. Shang knew Boyu's whereabouts, prompting Chilian to call the police to capture Boyu. Unfortunately, they couldn't find Boyu in time as he had already escaped. The following day, Xiao was at the salon, giving gifts to her co-workers. Her actions made them think she was leaving them. Zhou felt the same, but Xiao assured them she wasn't going anywhere. Later, Xiao received a call from Boyu, who asked her to meet him at warehouse Beijiao A, 2 at 9 p.m., as they were going back home soon. Shortly after, Chilian appeared to talk to Xiao. He informed her about Boyu's crimes, warning her that Boyu might harm her. Chilian urged Xiao to provide information to the police, but Xiao refused, believing in Boyu as a fellow time traveler like herself. Chilian didn't immediately believe Xiao, but eventually let her go with Boyu. However, Chilian still wanted to uncover the truth, hoping that Xiao, his good friend, and Jing Yang could return and find all the answers to the mysteries they had encountered. At that moment, Xiao was sitting alone in front of the salon gazing at it while trying to accept leaving behind all the memories in that world. Then, Xiao went to the place Boyu had told her about. On the other hand, Chilian was on the road again, this time getting information from old about the Mingguang laboratory. It turned out they were researching brain science, and when Chilian saw the documents sent by old, he found out one of their project plans was the lighthouse system. This immediately triggered memories of Jingyang building that system in the past. This memory left Kilian feeling confused and eager to know what had really happened. Meanwhile, Xiao arrived at the address Boyu had given her, but the atmosphere there was eerie. Eventually, she got a clue to go up to the building, where she met Boyu. However, Boyu's behavior had become strange. He hugged Xiao tightly and told her they weren't time travelers. He recounted a time when he took Xiao to a laboratory where he explained everything he had designed, including trying out the lighthouse system. However, during the experiment, they encountered a disruption that trapped them in the virtual world they were currently in. Boyu believed that everything in that world was his creation, which confused Xiao even more. Despite Boyu's explanations, Xiao tried to understand, but Boyu eventually revealed that their system had been severed by a virus, which was Kilian. Therefore, Boyu always ran away from Chilian. Boyu suggested a way out for Xiao to jump off the building with him to commit suicide. 
This terrified Xiao, who had actually contacted Qilian before meeting Boyu, causing Boyu to panic. He forced Xiao to jump with him. Fortunately, Qilian arrived in time to save Xiao. Their encounter turned into a fight. <laughs> Leaving Xiao torn between believing Boyu and trusting Qilian. Xiao ultimately chose to say goodbye to Qilian before jumping off the building. <laughs> Later, when Xiao woke up, she found herself in her original world and met Mr. Shu. However, when she met Boyu, he suddenly turned menacing, as if he wanted to attack her. Then, he transformed into Chilion, who seemed to want to kill her. It turned out to be just a dream, and Xiao was still in the Luoshan City Hospital. Meanwhile, Chilion was talking to the doctor about Xiao's condition. Thankfully, Xiao was physically fine, but her mental state was troubled. When Chilion approached Xiao, she seemed to have lost her spirit completely even viewing Chilian as an evil virus plotting to harm her. Xiao refused to believe anything Chilian said, despite his attempts to calm her down. In fact, when Chilian tried to comfort Xiao, she bit him, causing her to have a seizure. In another scene, a woman was watching a video recording of Boyu, as he had been captured by the police. She immediately ordered someone to make it disappear. On the other side, Chilian continued to take care of Xiao, who still desperately wanted to go back home and kept accusing Chilian of being the cause of her problems. Eventually, Chilian asked for one month to find all the answers, which made Xiao declare that she didn't want to see Chilian during that time. When Chilian left, Xiao remembered all the bad memories she had with him. The next day, Zhou came to pick up Xiao, showing great concern for her, especially since Qilian had asked Zhou to accompany Xiao. Zhou took Xiao back to the salon where she was comforted by all her friends, but Xiao refused their gestures of kindness. At that time, Lily also met Xiao, but Xiao ended up arguing with Lily because Xiao intentionally hurt Lily's feelings, hoping Lily would leave her, as Xiao didn't want to burden Lily. However, this only made Lily want to care more for Xiao, and eventually, they made up. Later, Xiao and all her colleagues were having a meal together to celebrate the new year. At the same time, Chilian dropped Zhou off at the venue, but Chilian didn't join them because Xiao didn't want to see him. After everyone gathered, they enjoyed each other's company. The next day, Xiao was back sitting in front of the salon. Before long, Zhou also arrived, surprised to see Xiao there since she hadn't gone to visit her grandmother. They chatted with each other, and this time, Zhou tried to make Xiao realize the kindness Qilian had shown her. However, Xiao's feelings remained unchanged, despite Zhou's words. Eventually, Zhou invited Xiao to have a meal together to enjoy the New Year atmosphere. In another scene, Qilian was meeting Boyu at the hospital, which frightened Boyu. However, Chilian continued to question Boyu about several things because he felt something was off. Boyu and Xiao's memories seemed drastically different, and Chilian suspected someone had manipulated Boyu into believing the world was just a virtual reality. This made Boyu hysterical. Eventually, Chilian had to stay silent at the police station as a warning for continuously bothering Boyu. There, Chilian concluded that Xiao didn't come from time travel. Their memories were intentionally altered to give them their own perceptions of their appearance in that world. However, Qilian was still curious about Jing Yang's disappearance. On the other hand, Xiao woke up from a dream and heard her friends' voices outside her room. It turned out her friends were ready to return to their hometowns. When Xiao opened a box on the table, she found some gifts and love letters from her friends, which deeply moved her because she felt genuinely cared for. Shortly after, Xiao received a call from her grandmother, who was eagerly awaiting her return. This prompted Xiao to decide to go home to see her grandmother. And this time, Xiao went with Zhou since they lived in the same city. During the journey, they chatted with each other. Suddenly, Zhang Bo called Xiao, offering her a job, but Xiao hesitated to accept the offer. After some time, Xiao finally got off at a train station, 
where her grandmother was waiting for her in heavy snowfall, showing immense affection for Xiao. Then they went home together. Upon arrival, Xiao was contacted by Zhou, who wanted to make sure she was all right. Xiao hoped that her presence there would help her find answers without relying on Qilian. When Xiao entered her room, she immediately recognized it, but she was puzzled because her parents in that world were the same as her actual parents, and everything else seemed identical. Eventually, Xiao found a diary belonging to her alternate self in that world. At that time, Xiao was reading the diary belonging to her alternate self in that world. The diary recounted all the difficulties Xiao faced, starting from the death of her parents, then her grandmother falling ill, to Xiao receiving a reprimand from her teacher for not being able to pay her school fees. This situation even led her classmates to accuse Xiao of being a thief, which made Xiao very angry, prompting her to storm out of the classroom. Xiao also crossed paths with Qilian at the classroom door. On the other hand, Qilian received a call from Zhou, informing him that Xiao was doing fine. This news made Qilian feel relieved. Shortly after, the police suddenly informed him that Boyu had committed suicide, which prompted Qilian to rush to the hospital. Meanwhile, Xiao continued to be curious about the continuation of the diary belonging to her alternate self in that world. Therefore, Xiao tried to ask her grandmother and eventually got some information. A year ago, Xiao had sent a large sum of money to her grandmother, and the village head had helped her grandmother collect the money. Learning this, Xiao immediately went to the village head's house. In a different scene, Chilian was meeting with Professor Lu. This time, Chilian was trying to get information from Professor Lu. According to Professor Lu's opinion, the problems Xiao experienced were highly unlikely to occur. However, when Chilian asked about the Mingguang laboratory, Professor Lu immediately recalled that the laboratory had indeed wanted to research brain science. But Professor Lu had only met the project supervisor once, named Nuoya, and he didn't have further information about Nuoya. On the other hand, Xiao was on a train, where the light reminded her of the memories she had with Qilian in that world. Xiao also recalled her past memories when she was being bullied by some male classmates, but Zhou and Qilian had helped save her. In the following days, Xiao continued to be near Qilian, because Qilian was greatly feared by the students at her school, especially those who bothered Xiao. One time, Xiao even woke up Qilian, who was still asleep, because Xiao wanted to protect herself. This situation made Qilian wonder about Xiao's intentions, and Xiao was very frightened. Xiao also apologized to Qilian, revealing that she didn't retaliate against the bullies, because she didn't want to receive a bad record at school, which would affect her national exams. Xiao realized that Kilian didn't have a place to stay, so she offered Kilian a place to live, but Chilian initially refused, suggesting Xiao seek protection from her parents. However, Xiao didn't have parents, which made Chilian start to feel sorry for Xiao. In the evening, Xiao accidentally splashed Chilian, who was riding his electric bike. Xiao immediately took responsibility for drying Chilian's clothes and even offered him to stay at the salon where she worked. Xiao's duty was to open and close the salon according to the schedule. Xiao also tended to Qilian's wound, and eventually Qilian agreed to Xiao's suggestion to stay there. The next day, Xiao came to wake up Qilian and brought him breakfast, but the food Xiao brought was very unpleasant. Then, they went to school as usual. Qilian kept falling asleep while Xiao continued to study. Until late at night, they were still together, and even the student who usually bullied Xiao no longer dared to do so. Xiao was also given a special place by Qilian's friends at the internet cafe Qilian frequented, but Xiao continued to study there. Moreover, they joked around with each other. In the following days, their relationship became even closer, and they seemed very happy. At that time, Xiao was drying Qilian's hair. Xiao also had to ask Qilian to move out of the salon because the salon was bankrupt and would soon be closed. Qilian didn't mind at all, and they still looked very happy together. In the evening, Xiao overheard some neighbors asking for money that Xiao's parents had borrowed. Instead, Xiao's grandmother gave all the money to Xiao so she could finish her schooling and continue to college. 
Xiao's grandmother also asked Xiao to leave with all the money so she wouldn't be bothered by the neighbors. Xiao hurriedly left home, and unexpectedly, Xiao met Chilian, who helped her leave. Later in the present time, Xiao's grandmother gave Chilian bad news that Xiao had disappeared. This prompted Chilian to rush to help find Xiao. Xiao's grandmother and uncle were also looking for her. While Chilian was on the train, he remembered his memories with Xiao when they stayed overnight in the unused salon. Remembering this, Chilian knew where Xiao was. Indeed, Xiao was at the salon, but this time, Xiao was very scared. Xiao kept saying that she wasn't the Xiao from that world, but she remembered all her past memories. <laughs> Seeing Xiao in such a state, Chilian was very concerned. Xiao had completely lost consciousness. Therefore, Chilian immediately comforted Xiao, reassuring her that he would always be by her side to face everything. The next day, Xiao was surprised by the presence of her teenage self, who was just like her. This time, Xiao was told that they were indeed the same. It turned out that it was all just Xiao's dream. When Xiao woke up, she saw a secret box behind some items. This made Xiao want to take it. Shortly after, Qilian was also there, and he immediately helped Xiao get the box. When Xiao opened it, she found a research subject proposal from the Mingguang Laboratory. Xiao was shocked by this, but didn't allow Qilian to see it, until he told her about the Mingguang Laboratory he knew. Qilian then told Xiao about the laboratory, and concluded that there was someone else behind the Lighthouse System project. Xiao and Boyu were used as their experiments, resulting in many changes in both of them. However, Xiao still didn't believe it, because she kept thinking that the world wasn't hers, and she still wanted to find a way to go back. Xiao also asked Qilian to help her. Unconsciously, Xiao kept holding Qilian's hand, because she was so scared of the shadow of the Xiao in that world. Then they went home to Xiao's grandmother's house. This time, Xiao's grandmother was very worried about her. At the same time, Qilian received a call from his father, and they visited Chilian's mother's grave together. However, Chilian's relationship with his father was very bad, even though they were a wealthy family. On the other hand, Xiao went to her school to get some answers, but the school gate was locked. Xiao then walked around the school, and unexpectedly saw memories of herself with Chilian. Their relationship was really close. Shortly after, Chilian was also there. His arrival made Xiao want to do what she had seen. Indeed, Chilian was still doing the same things as before. But Xiao didn't want to be treated like that, because she still felt that she wasn't the Xiao from that world. Eventually, they both fell down, and they started to roam the school until late at night. Qilian invited Xiao to open a time capsule buried under a tree. There, they read a letter written by Xiao. Surprisingly, Xiao wrote about all her experiences. The hardships Xiao faced made her dream of having a peaceful and happy life. Not only that, Xiao was also surprised because the letter was written by the Xiao from that world a day before she signed the research project contract. At that moment, Xiao also found a painting made by Xiao in that world. Surprisingly, the painting closely resembled her life as a wealthy girl. This made Xiao hysterical, and she refused to believe it. Xiao lost control of herself, prompting Qilian to immediately calm her down. Later, Chilian took Xiao back to her grandmother's house. There, Xiao asked Chilian to go to the Mingguang laboratory the next day, because she wanted to see the lighthouse system for herself. If not, Xiao wouldn't believe it. Chilian then informed Xiao that Bo Yu had committed suicide due to mental illness before his death. Knowing this shocked Xiao. She vowed not to go insane like Bo Yu before she knew the truth. Later, Chilian received a call from Professor Lu, who provided information about Nuoya. Surprisingly, the photo Professor Lu sent revealed that Nuoya was Jing Yang. This triggered Chilian's memories with Jing Yang. The next day, Chilian and Xiao went to the Mingguang laboratory. It was eerie there, as the lab was no longer in use. Despite their suspicions, they continued their investigation. Suddenly, Xiao slipped on the stairs and injured her foot. This prompted Qilian to ask Xiao to rest while he continued the investigation. Ah! After Qilian left, the lights in the place flickered, frightening Xiao. Nonetheless, 
Xiao continued her journey until she found the laboratory she was looking for. There, she relived the events she had experienced, confirming that she was indeed a subject of the Lighthouse System research. After undergoing several experiments, Xiao finally learned the secret intentionally hidden from her. The Lighthouse System was not just a game, but a system to implant Lighthouse modules into the nerves of research subjects. One team member also mentioned a research subject who tragically ended his life. Although initially successful in erasing painful memories, once the subject's brain was no longer connected to the computer, he went insane and committed suicide. Learning this shocked Xiao. She had also asked Boyu about it, but he seemed just as clueless as Xiao about the lighthouse system's truth. Moreover, Xiao remembered the place she had visited, where she found a book she had written herself. Its contents clarified that she was indeed herself, not a time traveler. Xiao had merely been given a beautiful dream according to the life she desired. Eventually, Xiao managed to escape from the laboratory, leading her to a place where she first woke up and believed she was a time traveler because all her memories had vanished. Meanwhile, Chilian noticed Xiao's absence and immediately began searching for her. He was shocked to find Xiao unconscious. Chilian promptly took Xiao away from the place. Unexpectedly, someone knew of their whereabouts. Later, Chilian took Xiao to a place to rest. When Xiao woke up, she immediately called for Chilian and told him that she couldn't return anymore. She feared she would go insane. Xiao hugged Chilian and cried, while Chilian continued to comfort her. He had already sensed that Xiao was the real Xiao and hadn't changed at all. While Chilian was on the phone with someone, he heard the sound of a glass breaking in Xiao's room, causing him to worry. Chilian quickly helped Xiao clean up the glass shards and stayed by her side to take care of her. The next day, Xiao and Chilian went home together. During the journey, Xiao appeared disheartened as she realized her thoughts were wrong. The world she thought was real turned out to be virtual and the luxury there was just a dream. Chilian informed Xiao that he was trying to find a treatment to reduce the influence of the lighthouse system on her. Xiao wouldn't feel tormented by her confusion about her life. However, Xiao still didn't want to forget the beautiful memories in that dream. At that moment, they finally arrived at Xiao's grandmother's house, which was Xiao's actual home. Suddenly, Chilian fainted when he got out of the car, prompting Xiao to rush him to the hospital. Upon reaching the hospital, Chilian received immediate treatment from the doctor. The doctor also mentioned that Chilian had a back injury, which deeply worried Xiao. Xiao helped take care of Chilian and stayed by his side. Xiao felt guilty because Chilian's injury was caused by her actions. She even had misunderstandings with Chilian. Shortly after, Chilian woke up. This time, Xiao told Chilian that she was invited by Zhou to attend a reunion with their friends. Xiao was curious about Chilian's friends. However, Chilian's friends didn't remember Jingyang at all. This made Xiao suspect that Chilian's friends might be pretending not to recognize Jingyang. Xiao also concluded that Jingyang was one of the perpetrators of the lighthouse system experiment. But something made Xiao suspicious because Jingyang's face and age in the photo didn't match. All of Xiao's words confused Chilian even more. Chilian also remembered the fight that happened years ago and the tragedy that befell Jing Yang while saving Chilian. Finally, Xiao asked Chilian to meet his childhood friend to get the answers he had been searching for. Xiao also began to move forward bravely, even though she already knew the truth about herself. This made Chilian feel slightly relieved. Later, Chilian went to meet his friends, and Zhou was there with them. However, the atmosphere was tense and Chilian's friends seemed to be hiding something from him. Although Zhou tried to lighten the mood, Chilian eventually mentioned that he had found Jing Yang. This disbelief from Chilian's friends prompted Chilian to rebel and ask what they were actually hiding from him. At first, no one wanted to tell Chilian the truth. Eventually, with emotions running high, Chilian wanted to drink a bottle of alcohol as a sign that their relationship would end that night. One of Chilian's friends stopped him and revealed the truth to Chilian. 
It turned out that Chilian had been mistaken all along. The person who saved Chilian years ago during the fight was Yangzi, not Jingyang. Unfortunately, Yangzi couldn't be saved, and this grief made Chilian feel guilty and depressed. Chilian's father decided to take him abroad for treatment, but when Chilian returned, he had forgotten about Yangzi and only continued searching for Jingyang. <laughs> This reality deeply affected Chilian. On the other hand, someone contacted Xiao, warning her not to continue investigating the truth. Otherwise, they would retaliate unexpectedly, even willing to harm Xiao and those around her. This frightened Xiao, who immediately checked on her grandmother's condition and contacted Chilian to ensure his well-being. However, Zhou informed Xiao that Chilian wasn't doing well. This news prompted Xiao to rush to Chilian's side looking very worried. While hugging Chilian, Xiao expressed her fear of something bad happening to those around her and her fear of going insane. Then they went home with Zhou. During the journey, Xiao learned that the Jingyang Chilian had been searching for was actually Yangzi. Zhou also told Xiao that Chilian had liked her since high school. Learning this saddened Xiao because she felt sorry for Chilian, as the person he had been waiting for was actually mentally unstable. After some time, they arrived at Xiao's house. However, Xiao asked Qilian to rest at Zhou's house. Zhou continued his journey, but halfway there, they had an accident. <laughs> Xiao, who knew about it, rushed to the scene with great concern. Xiao had to see Zhou and Qilian covered in blood. However, Xiao's presence angered Qilian's father, who blamed Xiao. This made Xiao feel dizzy so she decided to distance herself from her loved ones to prevent them from experiencing anything bad. A few days later, Xiao prepared to leave. The farewell between Xiao and her grandmother was very emotional. Then when Xiao was on her way, Zhou contacted her to update her on his and Qilian's condition. Fortunately, they were both fine. Xiao had also resigned from the salon and decided to go to Chongqing. Knowing all this, Zhu fully supported Xiao and showed great care for her, which deeply touched Xiao. At that time, Xiao was already at Zhuangming Beauty Academy, where she was looking for Jiang Bo. It turned out that Xiao would work as Jiang Bo's assistant, but Jiang Bo kept Xiao waiting for a long time. After a while, they finally met and Jiang Bo immediately gave Xiao her first salary. Later that night, Xiao was taken by one of the staff to the girl's dormitory, where she would stay while working as Jiang Bo's assistant. Not long after, Xiao received a call from Qilian. This time, Xiao had to pretend not to know about Qilian's condition, because Qilian didn't want Xiao to know. Xiao even asked them to stop investigating the Mingguang laboratory, because she felt it was no longer important to her. Xiao also told Qilian that she was in Chongqing now because she wanted to continue her life there. Xiao wanted to express something to Qilian, but she couldn't say it, so she ended up just crying, which led to Qilian ending their conversation. After that, Xiao decided not to contact Qilian anymore because Qilian would be fine without her. Meanwhile, Chilian was suddenly approached by Jing Yang, who asked Chilian to consider him just as his imaginary friend. Jing Yang's appearance successfully helped Chilian overcome his psychological trauma. However, Chilian asked why Xiao also recognized Jing Yang, but Jing Yang didn't give any answer to Chilian. Jing Yang just said that Chilian already knew the answer to his question. On the other hand, Xiao had started working but she still didn't know the tasks she was supposed to do, which led Jiang Bo to blame Xiao for not learning before coming to work with him. In a different scene, Chilian was taken by his father to return to their old house. There, Chilian went straight to his room and wanted to see what was inside the secret box in his room. At the same time, Jing Yang was there to convince Chilian to open the box. Unexpectedly, Chilian found a contract for the experimental trial of the Mingguang lighthouse system, and Chilian was the subject of the study. Even the trial was conducted in 2012. 
Knowing the truth, Chilian was shocked that he himself had been the problem for the past six years. On the other hand, Xiao was still working at the company when suddenly her stomach started hurting because she was menstruating. Xiao went to buy what she needed, but suddenly a cyclist hit her, causing Xiao to fall. Not long after, Chilian was also there to help Xiao. Xiao was a little surprised by Chilian's arrival. Then, they walked together. This time, Chilian already knew that Xiao wanted to distance herself from him, which made Chilian feel unacceptable. But Xiao kept saying that her time was short, because she might go crazy. However, Chilian didn't mind at all, because he would always be by Xiao's side. It turned out that all those expressions were Chilian's way of expressing love for Xiao. Chilian even guessed that Xiao was avoiding him because someone was threatening her, which Xiao confirmed because she cared more about the safety of those around her. Therefore, Xiao asked Chilian to forget about her. Although Chilian was unwilling to do so, Xiao still left Chilian, and it was a really tough decision for her. The next day, Xiao went back to work, and that day, she showed her progress. Jiang Bo, seeing Xiao, reminded him of the new secret he had just learned, that Xiao was being watched by her mother, and Xiao was still needed to improve the lighthouse system. Knowing all this made Jiang Bo feel surprised. In a different scene, Qi Lian was meeting with Shang and Jiangzi, and this time, they were still trying to find out about the accident that happened to Qi Lian and Zhou. When they saw the desk cam recording in Chilian's car, Chilian immediately concluded that the incident was intentional. Even Xiao had known that something would happen to Chilian beforehand. Shang also concluded that someone was threatening Xiao. At that time, Chilian was at his home, but he felt puzzled because the lab's henchman was still watching him. Shang was also in Chilian's yard, providing information about the situation around Chilian's house. Then, after the situation was safe, Chilian started to think hard about the events that had occurred from 2008 to 2018, which made Xiao and Boyu subjects of the Mingguang Laboratory's research. This immediately reminded Chilian of his conversation with Old, where they found some anomalies in Boyu's life story and death tragedy. Chilian also wondered why. After Xiao escaped from the Mingguang Laboratory, they didn't capture Xiao, but chose to watch her instead. After thinking further, Chilian identified the next investigation target, the Mammoth Game Studio, where Boyu used to work. Meanwhile, Xiao was on her way home, also chatting happily with Rui on the phone. But suddenly, Xiao saw Chilian again. Chilian's presence made Xiao want to keep going, without paying attention, but Chilian immediately stopped her. Despite Xiao's constant rejection of Chilian's love, Chilian wouldn't let go of Xiao. Xiao still didn't care about it, and insisted on avoiding Chilian until Chilian kissed her. The kiss made Xiao feel very sad, because she could feel how much Chilian loved her. Yet, Xiao still scolded Chilian, but even that failed to hurt Chilian's feelings. Finally, Xiao told Chilian that everything she did was because she didn't dare to promise anything, as her time was running out, and she didn't want to see her loved ones get hurt. Knowing all this, Chilian immediately comforted Xiao and Xiao bravely kissed Kilian back. The next day, Chilian accompanied Xiao, who was going on a business trip with Jiang Bo. Their relationship had improved significantly, and inadvertently, they even showed some romance in front of Jiang Bo. Chilian's arrival prompted Jiang Bo to ask him to accompany him and Xiao to the airport. After a while, Jiang Bo and Xiao arrived in Guangzhou. Xiao immediately started her duties as an assistant, but when they entered the hotel, Xiao's phone suddenly fell, almost trapping her. Fortunately, Jiang Bo helped her, but in the process, his own hand got caught. Xiao felt very guilty about this. Then, after providing a hand compressor, they went into the makeup room, where Jiang Bo explained the tasks to the makeup artists. Jiang Bo also gave an example of good and proper makeup. And unexpectedly, Xiao understood exactly what Jiang Bo needed for the makeup. However, when the makeup artists started working, Xiao accidentally caused a little commotion, which made Jiang Bo kick her out of the room. Jiang Bo's attitude made Xiao very angry. That night, they were on their way home. In the middle of the journey, 
Xiao asked Zhang Bo for help in writing a recommendation letter because she wanted to apply for a mid-level makeup artist certification. However, Jiang Bo refused to help Xiao and even kept belittling her. Finally, Xiao moved to a seat beside Jiang Bo, which made it easier for her to scold him for his attitude. Xiao was confident that she could impress Jiang Bo with her skills. Later, they arrived at the hotel, but their relationship was still strained. Jiang Bo asked Xiao to go to her room, where he gave her a makeup task. If Xiao succeeded, Jiang Bo would consider writing a recommendation letter for her. Knowing this, Xiao agreed, even offering to use Jiang Bo as her makeup model. After some time, Xiao finished the makeup, which surprisingly impressed Jiang Bo. Xiao's makeup skills were influenced by the facial art she learned in her dreams. Fortunately, Xiao's efforts convinced Jiang Bo to write the recommendation letter. After Xiao left, Jiang Bo remembered his painful past when his mother prevented him from becoming a makeup artist and even injured his hand to stop him from pursuing his dream. <laughs> On the other hand, Xiao was telling Chilian about Jiang Bo over the phone, making Chilian extremely jealous. Chilian also informed Xiao that Zhou was getting married, which initially brought them joy. However, the mood shifted when Xiao mentioned that she didn't have much time left, just a few decades. Chilian reminded Xiao that nobody knows the future. Their task is simply to keep living. Later, after talking to Xiao, Chilian contacted Old. They discussed the project Boyu had been involved in. Old informed Xiao that Nuoya and Jingyang were not listed in the Mammoth Company's roster. Moreover, it turned out that the boss of Mammoth was Fan, who also owned several other companies, including the Zhuangmeng Beauty Academy where Xiao worked. That night, Jiang Bo was meeting with Fan, but their relationship still seemed strained. Jiang Bo found out what Fan had done to Xiao because Fan allowed Xiao to become his assistant, whereas previously, Fan always fired all of Jiang Bo's assistants. Jiang Bo began to stand up to Fan, who always controlled his life, angering Fan, and causing him to throw a book at Jiang Bo, injuring his forehead. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chilian was in front of Fan's house, intending to interview her. Old was surprised by what Chilian wanted to do. Then, Xiao called Chilian with some good news. She had passed the makeup test. Xiao praised Jiang Bo for giving her the opportunity. Suddenly, Chilian ended the call upon seeing Jiang Bo leaving Fan's house looking worse for wear. Chilian followed Jiang Bo until they were at the company where Chilian confronted Jiang Bo, suspicious of his relationship with Fan. Chilian questioned whether Jiang Bo recruited Xiao out of his own will or at Fan's request. Jiang Bo didn't give any clear answers to Chilian's questions, pretending he didn't know much. However, Chilian informed Jiang Bo that Xiao always believed she was recruited based on her talent. Their conversation was overheard by Xiao, who then left them. Later, after Xiao finished talking to Rui on the phone, Chilian approached her. Xiao questioned the truth about why Jiang Bo recruited her as his assistant, but Chilian didn't immediately answer Xiao's question. After that, Chilian invited Xiao to talk at his apartment, where he began to tell her all his suspicions about Jiang Bo and Fan. He indirectly revealed that Xiao's presence at Zhuangmeng Beauty Academy was to keep an eye on her, all stemming from Boyu's employment at Fan's company and their connection to the Mingguang Laboratory. Chilian also told Xiao that they both had been subjects of the Mingguang Laboratory's research, shocking Xiao. However, Chilian felt grateful because he was proof that not all subjects of the research would end tragically like Boyu. Xiao felt reassured that she could live well like Chilian. However, they still couldn't find answers about Jingyang and Nuoya, who had similar faces. Therefore, they needed to find Nuoya to get the answers. The next day, Xiao returned to the company, intending to resign. However, she learned that Jiang Bo had already resigned. This news prompted Xiao to seek out Jiang Bo. When Xiao stood in front of Jiang Bo's building, Jiang Bo contacted her and invited her to meet him. This time, Jiang Bo would take Xiao to a big event where he would give her the opportunity to do makeup for a famous artist. Jiang Bo did this because he hoped Xiao could pursue her dream and he felt he owed Xiao nothing. 
When they reached the makeup room, they met Amy, who had been in the makeup industry for 20 years. Shortly after, Xiao's client arrived, and Xiao approached them. At first, the client underestimated Xiao's abilities, but Xiao managed to convince them, and they were very satisfied with Xiao's makeup. Shortly after, Yu Wei approached Xiao, wanting to recruit her for Xinghei Company's team. However, Xiao didn't immediately accept the offer, because she knew Fan was the boss of that company, and Jiang Bo also advised her against it. That night, the anticipated event for all artists finally arrived. Chilian was also there to see Fan's presence. Chilian also received information about Fan from his informant. Then, when Xiao's client was on the red carpet, a photographer noticed that the client's makeup was very poorly done, causing trouble for Xiao. Xiao was confused because she found makeup tools that didn't belong to her in her bag. At that time, Chilian got news from Rui that Xiao was having trouble with an artist named Xi. Meanwhile, Jiang Bo already knew who intentionally caused trouble for Xiao, and indeed it was Yue who did it. However, Yue was forced to do it according to Fan's orders. Jiang Bo immediately went to meet Xiao, who was already with Xia and a few others. On the other hand, Qilian was contacting his father, asking for his help to solve Xiao's problem because Qilian's father was acquainted with Xi's father. In a different scene, Jiang Bo was already in the room with Xiao and the others. There, Jiang Bo wanted to take responsibility for the issue because he was Xiao's boss, but Xi refused to accept it, believing Xiao had nothing to do with Jiang Bo. Jiang Bo even promised many things to Xi as a form of responsibility, but everyone thought Jiang Bo wouldn't be able to fulfill them. However, Jiang Bo finally revealed that Fan was his mother, shocking everyone, especially Xiao. Furthermore, Jiang Bo immediately contacted Fan to confirm it, successfully convincing everyone. <laughs> However, Fan was very angry because Jiang Bo revealed this information. Eventually, the issue was resolved as Xi's manager conveyed a message from her father not to prolong the matter. After everyone left, Jiang Bo approached Xiao again, admitting that he did have ulterior motives when recruiting her, but eventually couldn't go through with it because he realized Xiao's talent. Jiang Bo also informed Xiao that he would stop being a makeup artist, advising Xiao to continue pursuing her talent, which deeply saddened Xiao. Later, Xiao met with Qilian and told him that Jiang Bo had helped her out of trouble, but she still wanted to find evidence because she was innocent. Therefore, Qilian immediately helped Xiao review the CCTV footage, easily obtaining permission since the theater building was funded by her father's company. After watching the CCTV footage, they finally found the truth that someone intentionally wanted to get Xiao into trouble. Xiao also told Qilian that Jiang Bo was Fan's son, which surprised Qilian. Then, as Xiao left the theater building, she saw Fan slapping Jiang Bo, clearly very angry at him. Watching Fan's face reminded Xiao of seeing her when she was in the lighthouse system capsule causing Xiao to faint. After that, Qilian took Xiao to the hospital for a checkup, and indeed, there was a chip on Xiao's neck. Qilian then contacted Pak Chen, informing him of Xiao's condition. It turned out that Pak Chen was the one who asked Qilian to have Xiao checked. This made Qilian suspicious, thinking that perhaps Pak Chen also found a chip on Boyu's neck, but didn't say anything. Finally, Qilian informed that the chip in Xiao's neck had grown into her nervous system, which could weaken Xiao's immune system and have fatal consequences if removed immediately. But Qilian didn't want Xiao to know about it. After talking to Pak Chen, Qilian got his scan results, but there were no chips in his body, even though both Qilian and Xiao were subjects of the research. While looking at Xiao, Qilian kept wondering what the real difference was between the lighthouse systems they underwent. The next day, Rui was accompanying Xiao at the hospital. This time, Rui shared news about Jiang Bo, who had completely left his profession. Shortly after, Yue also arrived there, and Rui felt very annoyed by Yue's presence. It turned out that Yue wanted Xiao to stop Qilian from posting news about Fan and Jiang Bo on social media. After a while, Qilian came to visit Xiao. At that moment, Xiao immediately asked Qilian to sympathize with Jiang Bo. 
However, Chilian already knew about Zhang Bo and Fan's background. Zhang Bo was actually Fan's adopted child from Fan's first husband. And at the age of 10, Zhang Bo was accused of killing his own father. However, Zhang Bo suffered severe trauma from the violence, leading to him being detained at a rehabilitation center for four years. After his release, Zhang Bo continued to lead a difficult life. Learning about this made Xiao feel even more sorry for Zhang Bo, but Chilian reminded Xiao that Zhang Bo was also Fan's pawn. Shortly after, Chilian received news that Professor Lu had managed to find someone who recognized Nuoya. Then, Chilian immediately met with Professor Lu and Pak Bai. It turned out that Pak Bai was an investor in the Mingguang Laboratory and an early supporter of Nuoya's project idea about the lighthouse system. This time, Pak Bai delivered bad news that Nuoya had actually passed away five years ago due to a tragic accident. At that time, Nuoya wanted to move all the laboratory equipment to America. Pak Bai also felt sorry for the lighthouse system project, which was successfully copied by Fan's project. However, Pak Bai was puzzled about how Fan could find the core code of the lighthouse system. Moreover, Chilian looked even more shocked when he learned the truth that Nuoya was Jingyang. After that, Chilian returned to the hospital. Seeing Chilian there, Xiao wanted to tease him, but Chilian was actually crying because he felt very sad. He didn't have a chance to meet Jingyang. Understanding Chilian's feelings, Xiao immediately comforted him. In the evening, Chilian and Xiao were having dinner together. This time, Chilian told Xiao that Fan had stolen the core code of the lighthouse system from Jingyang, and Fan was secretly conducting research using that system. This further fueled Chilian's desire to uncover evidence and stop Fan, because Fan was using Jingyang's hard work to commit crimes. The next day, Chilian and Xiao went to Fan's house. They pretended to be interviewers for Fan, and Xiao would meet Zhang Bo. When they met Fan, Xiao boldly spoke rudely to Fan and kept insisting on meeting Zhang Bo. Initially, Fan didn't allow it, but eventually, Chilian revealed the truth about Fan's family's past. Fan's first husband was actually a makeup artist, but he had bad behavior that made Fan hate him. Therefore, Fan wanted to get rid of her husband, and she used Zhang Bo as a scapegoat for her evil deeds. All of Chilian's words made Fan recall the events from several years ago. However, Chilian cleverly stated that it was just his speculation, so Fan allowed Xiao to go and meet Jiang Bo. At that time, Xiao saw many makeup paintings in Jiang Bo's room. Xiao immediately approached Jiang Bo. It turned out that Xiao and Chilian were there to take Jiang Bo away from Fan's influence. Initially, Jiang Bo refused because he believed Fan would always capture him wherever he went. But Xiao didn't give up. She kept trying to persuade and convince Jiang Bo that there was a bright future ahead for him, just as he wanted. Finally, Xiao's efforts paid off, and she took Jiang Bo to face Fan, informing Fan that Jiang Bo was willing to join them. Jiang Bo confirmed this, even boldly stating to Fan that his life was the result of his own efforts, not Fan's gifts. Then, they left from there. That evening, they were at Chilian's house. This time, Xiao was really concerned about Jiang Bo which made Chilian slightly jealous of the attention Xiao was giving Jiang Bo. Xiao even asked Chilian to let Jiang Bo stay longer at his house. Then, Chilian took Xiao home, where Xiao continued to sympathize with Jiang Bo and expressed her desire to remain his assistant to motivate him to pursue his profession. Xiao also wanted to participate in the national makeup competition. Learning all this made Chilian very worried because of Xiao's weakened immune system due to the chip in her neck. However, Xiao's high spirits made Chilian determined to find a way to remove the chip from Xiao's body. The next day, Xiao came to Chilian's house again, and once again, Xiao paid more attention to Jiang Bo than Chilian, which made Chilian very jealous. However, Chilian felt annoyed because Jiang Bo wasn't being nice to Xiao despite her efforts to motivate him by suggesting they open a studio and participate in makeup competitions. Finally, Chilian persuaded Zhang Bo to have a conversation, where Zhang Bo expressed his reluctance to trouble Xiao. Still, Chilian insisted that Zhang Bo follow Xiao's advice, despite Zhang Bo trying to scare Chilian by suggesting Xiao might develop feelings for him. Xiao felt very happy when Chilian successfully persuaded Zhang Bo. Xiao was so excited to discuss their studio plans with Zhang Bo. Seeing their closeness, Chilian couldn't stay silent. 
He sat between them and expressed his desire to join their studio. Before leaving, he even changed seats with Xiao, leaving her confused by his sudden change in behavior. That night, Xiao continued studying. Shortly after, Qilian arrived and accidentally noticed a scar on the back of Xiao's neck, which made him feel very sorry for her. Qilian promised to continue trying to safely remove the chip without causing any harm. He then gave Xiao a letter she had written before, allowing Qilian to join their studio with Zhang Bo. They also exchanged affectionate gestures, which irritated Zhang Bo. The next day, Xiao started renovating their new studio, showing great enthusiasm in helping the workers. She even prepared food for Qilian and Zhang Bo. At that time, their studio was finally renovated. Xiao meticulously prepared all the necessary items, even setting up a room for Jiang Bo to rest. Then, Xiao approached Qilian to show how happy she was. The next day, Qilian was about to leave when Jiang Bo suddenly wanted to join him because he had something to discuss. On the way, Jiang Bo asked for Qilian's help to assist Xiao in securing a spot in the makeup competition, since there were some requirements they couldn't meet. Luckily, Qilian understood what needed to be done. On the other hand, Xiao was doing Rui's makeup, making her look stunning. Their relationship had improved significantly, and Rui even showcased Xiao's talent to her friends. Later, while Xiao was painting, Qilian's father approached her. He reminded Xiao to stay away from Qilian, citing past incidents where Xiao had caused trouble for him. At first, Xiao didn't remember anything, but Qilian's father quickly reminded her of past events including a fight involving Qilian that Xiao may have been connected to. He even accused Xiao of trying to take advantage of Qilian due to his wealthy background, leaving Xiao feeling very sad. That night, Jiang Bo delivered good news. Xiao had successfully registered for the makeup competition. However, Xiao didn't seem happy at all. When Qilian arrived, Xiao immediately hugged him, The next day, their studio, named Nippon Studio, was officially opened. In the following days, Xiao continued to paint makeup designs, but Jiang Bo remained dissatisfied with her work. Fortunately, Qilian was there to give Xiao some freedom. Late at night, Qilian took care of the exhausted Xiao who had fallen asleep. A few days later, the competition day arrived. To everyone's surprise, Xiao became a highly admired participant due to her exceptional makeup skills. After participating in several rounds, Xiao finally made it to the final round, which was the most challenging. Xiao showed her makeup design to Jiang Bo, intending to use it in the final round. However, Jiang Bo disagreed with Xiao, despite her exhaustion from lack of rest while creating the design. Eventually, Qilian allowed Xiao to use the design and suggested they return to Lushan for Zhou's wedding, seeking inspiration for Xiao's painting. The following day, Xiao and Qilian were in Lushan. Xiao continued painting, prompting Qilian to invite her to have a meal together. This time, they looked very happy, and Xiao took excellent care of Qilian. The next day, Xiao went to the salon to visit her friends. Her arrival brought joy to her friends, and even Zhou felt the same. Eventually, Zhou invited Xiao to chat in his office, but Xiao was more interested in knowing about Qilian's past. Reluctantly, Zhou had to tell Xiao everything. He revealed that Qilian had changed a lot because of Xiao, as he worked harder to get into the same university as Xiao. However, things didn't go well, as Qilian and his friends got into a fight with a gang. The gang leader held a grudge against Qilian because of Xiao, and the fight resulted in Qilian missing the national exams, along with all of his friends. Learning this made Xiao feel extremely guilty, especially since she wasn't there for Qilian during his tough times. Later, Xiao sat alone, crying. Soon enough, Qilian arrived and realized why Xiao was upset. He also knew that his father had spoken to Xiao. This time, Xiao felt genuinely sorry for Qilian, but he reassured her that he didn't hold it against her. Despite going through it alone, Qilian understood the situation, so he comforted Xiao and felt happy to be back with her. He then carried Xiao home. The following day was Zhou's wedding day, and Xiao was the makeup artist for the bride. After the wedding, Xiao and Qilian went to a beautiful place, where they continued to show affection for each other. 
They were grateful that fate had brought them back together, and their relationship improved once again, eventually leading them to love each other, especially since Chilian had already loved Xiao for a long time. At that time, Rui was meeting Xiao. It turned out Rui was surprised that Xiao didn't make it to the top 20 in the makeup competition, but Xiao didn't mind it at all. Later, Xiao gathered with Qilian and Zhang Bo. This time, they were discussing Xiao's results, knowing that it was all a fan's doing. However, Fan was very clever in covering it up, preventing the media from suspecting her actions. This immediately led Zhang Bo to apologize to Xiao, but Xiao was still okay with it. Afterwards, Xiao and Qilian went to the venue for the final makeup event. There, Qilian met a friend who informed him that indeed it was Fan who prevented Xiao from advancing to the final round. However, Qilian's friend couldn't help him in that matter. Then, as they were about to leave, they unexpectedly ran into Qilian's father. This encounter prompted Qilian to firmly hold Xiao's hand, angering Qilian's father. Xiao boldly stood her ground against Qilian's father, and her words silenced him as he realized he had never been there for Qilian when he needed attention and affection. Eventually, they left Qilian's father behind. During the journey, Xiao felt a bit scared because of her actions towards Qilian's father, but Qilian didn't mind it at all. In fact, Qilian comforted Xiao, and they looked so happy together that Xiao even gave Qilian a kiss. In the evening, Xiao fell asleep in the studio. Zhang Bo woke her up to ensure she rested, but Xiao almost fell over and her immune system dropped again. Zhang Bo accidentally noticed a scar on the back of Xiao's neck and asked her about it, but Xiao didn't even know about the scar herself. The next day, Xiao went to the hospital for a checkup, but she learned something shocking. There was a chip in the nerves at the back of her neck. This needed immediate attention to prevent Xiao's condition from worsening. Knowing this made Xiao very sad. Shortly after, Qilian managed to meet Xiao. This time, Xiao questioned why Qilian hid all this from her, and Qilian's reason was to prevent Xiao from worrying. However, Qilian had found a way to remove the chip, which made Xiao feel a bit relieved. Qilian also comforted Xiao and gave her a candy to stop her from crying. Then, Qilian went to meet Pak Bai. This time, Qilian was surprised by the information Pak Bai provided. Fan and Kilian had both been subjects in Jingyang's research, but only Kilian had successfully passed the lighthouse system experiment. Jingyang didn't release his responsibility for Fan's failure, but suddenly, the Mingguang Laboratory went bankrupt. This made Fan want to acquire the Mingguang Laboratory, but Jingyang didn't allow it. Qilian suspected that Fan killed Jingyang because Fan felt Jingyang was no longer responsible for her, as Jingyang wanted to move abroad. Even when Fan managed to acquire the Mingguang Laboratory's equipment, she immediately stole the core code of the lighthouse system and recruited two research subjects, implanting chips in their necks. However, all of this was Kilian's speculation. Chilian also needed to find evidence to strengthen his suspicion. But Pak Bai said they already had the evidence. The chip in Xiao's neck, which they would get after successfully removing it. However, Chilian was worried that Fan also wanted the chip. In the evening, Xiao was alone in the studio when suddenly she was confronted again by her dream self, with Pak Shu also present, both urging her to return to the dream world. This terrified Xiao, and she immediately fainted. <laughs> then Chilian rushed Xiao to the hospital. Pak Bai was also there to meet Chilian. This time, Pak Bai tried to calm Chilian down, but Chilian was truly worried about Xiao. He feared something bad might happen to her, and Xiao's condition at that time didn't provide any results as to whether the experiment she underwent was successful or not. After that, Chilian stayed by Xiao's side until she regained consciousness. Chilian also prepared food for Xiao. This time Xiao kept smiling at Chilian, and even invited him to take a photo together. Xiao then uploaded the photo as a keepsake for both of them, which made her feel very sad. Chilian felt the same way, and they found it hard to hold back their tears. However, Xiao kept trying to smile, and even asked Chilian out on a date for the next day. The next day, Chilian was already waiting for Xiao, and shortly after, 
Xiao approached Chilian looking incredibly beautiful, leaving Chilian amazed. They joked around as if they were business partners. But then Chilian knelt down in front of Xiao romantically, admiring her beauty. Suddenly, Xiao asked Chilian to always remember her, which made Chilian very sad. Xiao couldn't hold back her own sadness, but she tried to comfort Chilian, telling him how much she loved him. Finally, Chilian kissed and hugged Xiao, as he also loved her deeply. At that moment, Chilian and Xiao looked very happy enjoying their time together, full of beauty. Later, Chilian met Jiangbo. This time, Chilian asked Jiangbo for help to record fans' conversations, as fan might discuss the lighthouse system or something related to Xiao. On the other hand, Xiao was in the studio when she received a message from Jiangbo asking for her help to do someone's makeup. Xiao immediately contacted Kilian to go to the address Jiangbo provided. Upon arrival, Xiao started to feel something was off because the atmosphere there was very unusual and didn't seem like there would be an art studio. However, they did find the studio and they encountered a woman. Suddenly, a man asked Kilian to move his car because a truck needed to pass through. As Chilian went, Xiao was shocked by the woman's face and then was stabbed with a syringe, causing her to faint. Meanwhile, Chilian realized they were being deceived. He rushed back to Xiao, only to find her gone. Chilian then got knocked unconscious with a single blow to his back. In another scene, Jiang Bo was already caught by his mother because Fan caught him carrying a voice recorder when meeting her. Jiang Bo couldn't do anything when he heard that Fan planned something bad for Xiao. Even Fan's henchmen managed to capture Xiao and Qi Lian. Finally, Fan found Xiao and Qi Lian unconscious. Jiang Bo was there with them, and Fan splashed water on Xiao to wake her up. Fan mercilessly attacked them, continuously stabbing Qi Lian and Jiang Bo. Qi Lian resisted while Jiang Bo begged Fan to stop her evil intentions. Fan's anger peaked when she found out Killian was the successful research subject. Fortunately, the police arrived just in time and arrested Fan. Xiao looked very scared and worried about Chilian's condition. At the hospital, Xiao continued to accompany Chilian. Chilian even instructed Xiao to continue her makeup competition until it was over. This situation made Xiao very sad but she had to follow Chilian's instructions even though she wasn't feeling well because her mind was haunted by the shadows of her dreams, urging her to stop everything she was doing. Eventually, Xiao tried to calm down and control herself. She also kept imagining her moments with the people who were very kind to her. As a result, Xiao's efforts paid off and she continued to do makeup until it was finished. The next day, Mr. Chen met Chilian, who was still at the hospital. This time, Mr. Chen provided information that Fan had confessed to her crime, admitting that she was the one who killed Jing Yang. Mr. Chen also found the original voice recording of Jing Yang during the police investigation. Chilian immediately listened to the voice recording. It turned out that Jing Yang felt very lucky to meet Chilian because Chilian was the first person successfully treated by his lighthouse system invention. However, they didn't have much time because Jing Yang had to leave in a very tragic way. But Jing Yang managed to create a secret code to prevent others from doing something bad through the lighthouse system. And if someday the lighthouse system was used for something wrong, then Chilian would automatically receive a signal. Jing Yang also truly admitted that Chilian was his best friend, as Jing Yang had said when he met Chilian in his dream. Knowing all this made Chilian very sad. On the other hand, Xiao was looking at the makeup competition announcement, with Jiang Bo by her side. Xiao didn't win the competition, but she didn't feel sad at all. Shortly after, Chilian also joined them. This time, Chilian supported Xiao's decision to return as Jiang Bo's assistant. Xiao immediately agreed with everything Chilian said, because Chilian always supported all of Xiao's decisions. Not only that, but finally, they could live peacefully and calmly. Some time later, Xiao and Chilian went to visit Xiao's grandmother, and that day happened to be New Year's Eve. So, they celebrated the night by playing with fireworks. They looked very happy, and Chilian had even reconciled with his father. The next day, 
Xiao and Chilian went to enjoy the winter while walking on the train tracks. This time, they chatted with each other, and finally, they could truly live a normal and happy life because they would always be grateful for the success they achieved. So, that's the discussion of the Chinese drama Derailment, full episodes 1 to 30. What do you think? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section or suggest any dramas you'd like us to discuss in the future. Life is a gift, so accept whatever is in it with sincerity. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed our content and watch the recommendations from our latest and best videos. Thank you so much for watching until now and see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.